Hello everyone and welcome to What Do You Talk. I'm Woody and today we're going to talk about a lot of the results. And today I am welcomed by Bomber. Hello Bomber, how are you doing today? Uh, doing good. Just recovering from a sickness. Just I was had a cold, runny nose, sore throat, all that good stuff. So, uh, you know, doing better. So I'm ready to go. Ready to do this thing. How are you today, Scott? I was going to say, I'm here too. I'm recording it. I'm streaming it. Hello everybody. I'm doing pretty good. Um... To, I'll just say today was a pretty fun day. I always go to Halloween stores when they open up and look for their stuff and props and things. And been doing that earlier today. It was pretty fun. Found some stuff. Found some random garage sale stuff. So it's interesting things. But I am definitely excited to talk about some of the results from All In and the uh, the upcoming shows where things are going. The the war is getting crazy. Yeah, the war is definitely it's definitely leading up to its uh, climax, which I'm guessing will be Survivor Series, but. It's definitely getting there. I've been, uh, I've also had like the sick bug and everything, so I probably got that from all in. And uh, I've just been bedridden like all week, and it sucks. Oh, well, hey, yeah, me too. It's good. Well, I mean, you were, <laughs> yeah, you were there at all in. Bomber just, I, I was just, they're watching it or something. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. yeah, you were there with some JRP members, right, Woody? Uh, I was, I was with, I was with Jeremy and Warden. And uh, it was uh, it was a good time, and we also we even saw uh, Zion for like a little bit, so that was fun. What was he? What was he doing? How was he? Did he have a big get together group? Because I know he was hosting like a get together. Oh, uh, we we actually saw him at the uh, event itself, and he was at the food court. Of course he was. Of course he was at the food court. That's his job. That is don't his give job. Him, don't don't. <laughs> it was like. Yeah, it was like a 15, 20 second conversation, and then like we were just there for wrestling. We said hello, and then they went on their way. But uh, it was nice, and the event itself was really fun. But uh, we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about the JRPL. So yeah, I guess we can just jump. Yeah, how fun was the JRPL uh, all in event? Eh, eh. Oh, eh. we're about to find that out, aren't we? I liked it. <laughs> I thought it was great <clears throat> myself. I guess we're going to start uh, start off with the, result, the results first, I guess. The results. Want me to intro them for again, Woody? Yeah, yeah, go I'll, for it. I'll throw the intro, and then you can jump in. We can get uh, the comments from there. I'll start with the opening. It's a fart bucket match. Uh, Baron Ash defeated fart bucket, 43 to 29. Wow. Yeah, it's a... Co- no, fart bucket got 29. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the takeaway from this match? <laughs> No, I mean, uh, Fart Bucket, uh, 29 is pretty solid. Uh, he usually does better on these random shows, I guess because people aren't all too familiar with that, with uh, like Ring of Honor and this kind of stuff. So, mm-hmm. To be yeah. fair, this was the randomest of random shows because it had like Ring of Honor people and uh, Impact people and it was. people from nothing. Yeah. And these matches both meant something and meant nothing. So it was like, who knows going in, so... It was one of the more unique ones right now. This is an interesting time of year. So, Baron Ash got the win on that one. Um, it's Fart Bucket. I'm not surprised. Yeah, it's a common theme with uh, Bucket. He either does really bad or he does a lot better than uh, people think. We're thinking. And at this point, he didn't do awful. He got a lot of points, but I felt like. I was expecting him to get a little bit more than what he did get. Yeah, it was it was Baron Ash's turn. That's that's basically what this game came down to. It was his <laughs> turn to get the W. It was his everybody turn. Ri- everybody rides the bucket. Everybody <laughs> rides the bucket except for a uh, broken nerd. Broken. He actually, uh, yeah, yeah, he was on the other end and of that bucket. Else. Oh yeah, who? Uh, uh, C.J. Blackthorn, Bailey? right? Yeah, C.J. Yeah, oh, C.J. Blackthorn. Yeah. I can't believe Fart Bucket won two matches. That's that's embarrassing. But anyway, it's not it's not going to be three, but we'll get there. Um, next up, Peanut beat Breaker and CM Carlito, fifty forty three thirty eight. Yeah, uh, I I didn't think Peanut was actually going to post his picks. Obviously, um, I guess I bring it up right here. I I was uh, out of town, obviously, so I didn't get to see anybody's picks when they were submitted to like day after the show or whatever it was. Until I yeah, came you were home. all weekend, right? You yeah. were gone like Friday. I yeah, think, I was out so. of town doing fantasy football drafts, hanging out with uh, like staying at my friend's place, 
and I didn't even get the login. I didn't see anybody's picks. I didn't see who submitted. I didn't know what I didn't know what was going on. But uh, I was shocked when I actually saw Peanut's name in there. So yeah, this was kind of a throw together match, obviously. But even more shocked that he posted his picks that he actually won in all, at all in, which is uh, crazy because Peanut doesn't win either. Yeah, I wasn't expecting a Peanut win. Like I just I keep thinking like. Breaker is gonna like gonna be the one to break out, but he just he gets so close, but then he just gets put down like so many times. It's really disheartening. Yeah, he's a, he's an up and down guy. Mm -hmm. So I mean, so is Carlito, but I mean, I'm trying to get him into that like him, Breaker and Carlito are both uh, up and down guys, and I'm trying to get Carlito into that uh, the tag division there. So we'll see. His partner won, so that's good. But uh, well, that's. That's the next one. Uh, Super Hippo defeated Cade Gailey, forty-two to forty-one by one point. One, one point. So point. I think the important thing there is after Cade Gailey beat Redhead, and now came within a point of Super Hippo. Can't sleep on that. That's that's good. That needs to be recognized uh -huh. a bit. And it's he, not the win, but he, I mean it was a win against Redhead. So these aren't nothing losses either. Now I like, believe he lost to Peanut at I think SummerSlam. I'm just double checking that real quick. Yes, Peanut beat uh, K. Gailey at SummerSlam, mm -hmm. and he immediately uh, messaged me and said he wanted a rematch at Hell in a Cell, which we'll get to that in a little bit, but uh, he wanted him in a hardcore match. So uh, okay. that is a little preview like, of his next match. Uh, I like K. being into that, being interested. I mean, like yeah. I said, took the late notice match with Redhead when Redhead was literally going against the world title contender when John yes. didn't show Redhead's fault um, and beat Redhead. So it's like yep. that's... That, that makes everybody take notice. So yep. definitely interesting there. That I like that. I like seeing where this can go for sure. Mm -hmm. And I mean, at the same time, Super Hippo scraped a win by a point. That's not like Super Hippo. I mean, the win's a win. Lately, yeah. the domination is not there anymore. It's it's rough times. No, that's been, yeah, it's been he's he's on the outs. Hopefully, I'm, that's why I'm hoping this tag team thing will revive him. But we'll see. Uh, next up, if we're ready to move on. It is Modstep defeating Sling Blade, fifty-one to thirty-eight. Another one. That's another surprise. I had no idea Modstep was going to show up. Well, because Modstep just came back, right, and like in a big way. But yeah, and he never has done house shows before. This is his no. first house show, I believe. Yeah. And that's why this is kind of a crazy fun match. Like All In, not only was what it was in regards to being a totally big independent show with people you wouldn't normally see. It happened for the JRPL, too. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> like, it literally had that cool feel of, like, no, this is the, an important house show. What? It's, it's cool. It's, it's interesting. Um, I'm not surprised by the win in one way, but that's a good win. I think that's the best spread. Oh, yeah, um, that was a big win, yeah. So far, that's a good win. Because 38 is not a, a slow chip score either, so. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. But, Can uh, we say for a certainty that Modstep is back? Like, how many shows has he been back for? He's been back for every show, except he did not show up to uh, take the TakeOver show before yeah. SummerSlam, which was, what, Chicago? Yeah, he didn't show up for Chicago. Yeah. And, I'd say yes. Um, I'd say he's back. What's, mm. Well, he's been doing, not Chicago, been doing sorry, decent Brooklyn. since he's been back. Brooklyn, you're right. Oh, yeah, he has not lost. He has not lost a match since he's been back. That is correct. He has not lost a match since he's been back, including this one. That's so, dangerous. That's yes. very dangerous. He's it's kind of like what you need, though. I mean, even Cam, Cam Popplestone, you know, he went away for a little bit. And when he came back, he was just better than ever. Yep. That's true. And it's good. Pull that ACL and come back strong. Yeah, I mean, so far, taking a break, taking a breather a little bit. I mean, Modstep's never been – I've never been vocal at all, so he kind of just disappeared and then came back. But people just taking a break, when you need to take a break, they've came back and they've been pretty strong, so – I mean, whatever works, but if it works, mm -hmm. it works. So, next up, we have that guy Jack defeating Voodoo Dreamer, thirty-six to thirty-four. My Very boy, close. that guy Jack. Man, I, I was hoping, man, if him and Kev Kev both would have won, that would have been great. Again, I didn't talk to these guys at work because I was off on the weekend. I was again, I was in, uh, I went to Wilmington, and. I didn't even mention the show. I didn't say anything about the show. I went. I came back, and they both had their picks in. I'm like, what the fuck? This is like this, this is awesome. Well, let's combine that. TB six 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 defeated Kev Kev forty four to thirty two. That's yeah. the next match. Yeah, so Kev, yeah, Kev so they, they kind of split but... it there. Yeah, 
But at least one of them got a win, so that's fun. Yeah. Mm. But again, um, but they're I, normally I, WWE guys, is it right? Like yes. they just watch the main stuff. They so this is a surprising one. Yeah. They don't even do NXT. They <clears> do strictly WWE. That's cool that they showed up for this. That's really good. Yeah. I like and I had, again, I didn't tell them to do it. I, I didn't know they were going to do it. So that was that was fun. I like that. That's that's good stuff. <clears throat> But I don't. I wouldn't expect them to show up at another house show. By the way, I, I think no, this was a but, one-time deal. Like it was. It was because it was all in. Because it was such a unique, yeah. special thing. Yeah. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think we had over fifty for house shows. We don't normally get up in the the fifties, but we were over fifty for this show. So I don't remember the exact number, That's but insane. we were over fifties. Yeah. We usually hit in the forties for house shows, Ring of Honor and stuff. But I think we were in the fifties for this one. So. We got an interesting comment in the uh, the chat here. Vitamin S says, "I can only imagine when Cyborg comes back." Yeah, Crimson Cyborg left right around the anniversary build. Yep. So mm-hmm. that could be a good strong comeback too, for sure. That is very true. Very true. Uh, next it up, is. we have. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Woody. No, I said it is talking about the uh, Cyborg thing. Oh, you've got a vested interest in that, I know, too. So I do, because you don't know which side he's going to take when he does come back. You know, he has mm-hmm. beef on one side, and then he has beef on the other. Yeah. Next up, we have Tom defeating the Green Machine, 56 to 45. Yeah. I think those are the, that's, the, that's the highest losing score that we've seen yet. These 45 guys... would have beaten nearly every other person that we've talked about yeah, so far. Yeah, these guys were... That's good. Just shy of getting the main event. They were two point. Uh, sorry, not main event. Sorry, uh, match of the night. They were two point shy of match of the night. Their combo. So they were. They were the. Clo- this was the second closest to match of the night. And I mean, you got two heavy hitters. You got Tom and Green Machine, two former champions. So I mean, mm. I mean yeah, for was... the record, bummer. What was match of the night? I don't see that listed oh, in the. Uh, yeah, it's in the write up, but it's not like a. It's not an obvious oh, one. Okay. It was Jonathan so C.T. Martin already had. It. Yeah, Jonathan C.T. Martin defeated uh, Vitamin Yes was gotcha. match of the night. Yeah, 58 to 45. Literally two points wow. more. Yeah, it was two points more. But okay. those, yeah, that was match of the night. Tom versus Green Machine seems like uh, a match you'd see on the main card, just like how yeah. big yeah, how big of the match that is. Yeah, no, that, I mean, for real, two heavy hitters, former champions. It was – and a lot of these, like, undercard shows, literally because I was scrambling trying to get everything done as quick as I could. So I grabbed – I when I saw names, I just kind of – I didn't really think about who was facing who. I just grabbed names, and I literally threw them together. That's kind of how, mm-hmm. like, the bottom of the card kind of developed. And, I mean, it's a house show. There's no real storylines going into it, so I figured it wasn't that big of a – that big of a deal as far as the uh, the bottom of the card went. So, mm-hmm. but yeah, that there was li- literally no thought process behind the the bo- these bottom matches here. So, but it ended up being well, a great match. So that's good. Yeah. Next up, actually, very similar scores. Uh, Broken Nerd defeated Doctor Tommy Oliver. I think that's the debut. Uh, that, Fifty-one yep. to forty-five. There's no pick for t- uh, Doctor Tommy Oliver yet. Yes. So. But he. And I understand. <laughs> That's a Power Rangers reference, I think. Tommy Oliver, yes, Green Ranger, and he correct? also oh, yeah. posted the his pick base as the Green Ranger. Um, I forgot the guy is Jason something or another. Uh, Jason David Frank. Yes, that's actually he typed that that he put that name in there. But he actually did also do a actual pick base too. I'm gonna go get that. You guys can talk about the like what you guys thought about the debut and whatnot. I will go find. I'll f- well, for the record, we just said it. Green Machine got 45. So did Dr. Tommy Oliver. So outside of, literally, I'll scroll back here, outside of Moz Steps 51 and Peanuts 53, of the uh, 13 or 14 people we've talked about, Dr. Tommy Oliver would have beaten all of them. And looking at the next two matches, would have beaten all of that too. Yep. So there, there's only a few people that would have beaten them, and Broken Nerd did it. Uh, with 51, so that's a very, very good score coming in. Oh, yeah, Broken Nerd came to fucking play. 51 points. With, so did Oliver. That's, I mean, literally, well, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That, that one's really good, too. That was a close one. Uh, when's, when's the last time Nerd's had a title match? Oh, I saw his, oh, Jesus, here we go. Here we go. He hasn't got <laughs> one. He hasn't got one. He, I saw his comment on Twitter. Yeah, uh, he hasn't got a title match yet, because... He, he, what did he say? Hold on. What was his fucking tweet? He said something about... I'll have to go through me first. I want one, too. <laughs> yeah, he was... He was telling about Match of the Night. He was oh, like, I, I've not gotten that yet. Well, that's... Yeah. 
<laughs> I'm about to find. I already have it. I got a. Right I got to face redhead to get match of the night. I think that's the the key. Here was his question. Here was his question, he was his question that he asked. Uh, that he wanted us to like answer. What JRPL superstar has won four match of the nights, had two perfect cards, and still didn't get a title match? Uh, the answer, yes, broken nerd. That's that's. I mean, it's. Well, let's see what happens. He's done. He's done good. He does good. He shows signs of greatness like this, like fifty-one points. That's a great. That's a great score. But then, we put him in matches against Fart Bucket, and he gets beat. So I mean, you know, it's it's hard. To get pushed if you're losing to guys like Fart Bucket. Yeah, but what was it, wasn't that a house show, though? I don't re I probably was. It might have been. But, but again, for the regular, the highest but possible I'm points. Okay, was let me. So, yeah. I'm looking at statistics here. Let me pull up his record. Not counting this last one because it hasn't been up. I, I thought it was Slammiversary or something like that where a nerd lost to him. It, it was a house show, yeah. Um, Broken Nerd's record is. His total record is 14 and 22. Um, it, which. 14 wins is pretty impressive, but 22 is the second most losses in the JRPL. So you see a lot of uh, a, like one win and then like two losses, and then another win and another loss, and then one win and like three losses. It's really hard to keep the momentum going. Now, if you get some a good string of wins going, title matches will be coming your way. So this could be part of it. Yeah, he he's a little he's he's stop and go, stop and go, stop and go. So. Um, Big stop and go and stop and go. Uh, Matt Zion lost his matches next year. Junction yeah. beat Matt forty three to forty one. Yep, yep, sure did. Matt showed up to a house show, guys. Mark it down. And again, he was at the show, so that's why I was telling mm -hmm. him you better fucking show up to this. So uh, he did, and he came close, but not quite. Uh, Junction got him. I'm telling you, man, Junction Junction's been doing good in the singles. If they can, if just him and CT Martin. Can just get the tag team together, maybe some shit can happen. Yeah, that baffles me. Like they do so well singles, but then when they go to a tag team, it's just like an opposite effect. It's just like, well, what the fuck do they have to do to string up some wins? Yeah, it's. I don't know. I mean, if they keep winning, I mean, getting wins. If they can string them together, it's gonna work out. Same with Broken Nerd. Same with like everybody. If you get wins, if you keep getting wins. The stuff will work out in your favor. So, just you gotta you gotta get them wins. You gotta string them together. Start a streak. It doesn't have to be a major streak like Woody or somebody else has had before. Just get some wins and you'll get some title matches. Yeah, I hate. I always hated whenever I'd get like a win and then a loss. I'd rather just get multiple wins and then maybe a loss or two here and there. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Uh, sorry to jump back real quick, but uh, Doctor Tommy Oliver. His top selection was Jason David Frank. Second selection was Cody Rhodes. So, uh, oh. so yeah. if he if he keeps showing up, I mean, he'll get he'll be the Cody Rhodes pick. Uh, Cody Rhodes pick base. So nobody else has selected that before. So there you go. But anyway, uh, next up, Bionic Knee defeated Real Deal JRH forty three to thirty eight. Yeah, uh, I think Real Deal JRH is like Nathan's friend, I think. Didn't Nathan recruit him or yeah. something like that? Yeah. Yes, he is. Um, I don't know much about him. Obviously, he's still fresh and new. Um, but he went against a super tough opponent. It was kind of like bad. He drew the uh, short straw there. So To be fair, 43 to 38 uh, didn't lose by much. That's like oh, that's a match. Yeah. It is close, but Broken Nerd is pretty pretty high up on the uh, totem pole there. Oh, Bionic Knee, man. Bionic, what did I say? Broken Nerd. Broken nerd, sorry, yes, bionic knee, bionic knee. See, broken nerd, you got your, your damn, your Twitter, your You're tweets. in his head. Yeah, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. You don't want to be in there. Yeah, you don't want to be in here. Yeah, it's not a bad score by Real Deal, Real Deal, let's call him GRH, by uh, GRH, and mm -hmm. hopefully if he keeps putting out things like that and keeps coming up, he might see himself in a title contention, who knows? Maybe hey, if him and uh, Nathan are friends or buddies, hey guys, we're we're looking for tag teams, huh? Eh? eh? Yeah, the division's dead. Yeah, I mean maybe you guys should uh, team up together because we need some tag teams, I don't, guys. I will, I don't think it's dead. Well, it's not dead, but it's it, it is uh, wounded. We'll say that. It yes, is. it is. I'll say it's wounded, but it's not dead because there's yeah. a lot of up and coming tag teams. Yeah, like the, like not, but, the UVC. So. But, but but there is one team where it's dead. <laughs> so, yes, know. one team did actually like lose someone. Y so. Yeah, yeah. So 
Anyway, next up, Wrestling Ferrara uh, defeated Otis, 56 to 32. That's a 56. debut. Debut right there from that man. Is tied with Tom's 56 for the highest point so far. Remember, mm-hmm. Max was 61. So that's damn good. And Otis yeah. with a 32, that's a bit rough. That's a Kevin Owens pick base as well, That for the record. I like that. Yep, I hope, um, hope he sticks that's around. That's real good. That's really, holy crap, that's good. I saw him on Twitter. I He came through uh, Bad Guy George. I saw he, found, he started posting stuff on Twitter. And this wrestling Ferrara guy... I don't know how he knows uh, Bad Guy George, but he commented and said, oh, hey, what is that? That looks cool, talking about JRPL. And I dropped him the link to the Discord. He joined Discord. He popped the stuff up, signed up, and look at that. Scored 56 points on his debut. So uh, I hope he sticks with it. hope he shows up more and becomes yeah, a regular. That would be great. If I remember correct, I remember him coming in like asking, like, how do I join? How do I do this and this and this? Yeah. And everybody was awesome helping him out. I, I came in after it all happened. Yeah. Everyone, just for the record, just people know listening, in case you're wondering what it's all about. Everybody's awesome and helpful and gets you in and get, gets you set up. You, you might not have a match booked right away, but if you post your picks, you will be given a match like oh, he yeah. was. And so, yeah, that's how that works. And then he beat Otis, a, uh, a veteran. Yeah. So that, when that kind of stuff happens, then you might get booked in a match after you show up a few times. Oh, you're reliable. You'll have a match on the next card, which mm-hmm. we'll talk about after. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, for anybody who's wondering about joining in, it's that easy. Jobberradio.com. There you go. Yeah. There, there, he's uh, a, lot of, it's a lot of points, and hopefully he can continue with those points, you know, like on main shows and beyond. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The main thing I always get sketchy with the new people is, are they going to show up again? We've, I mean, it, it, is, it is a normal thing. It's definitely expected for new people to show up and just not, uh, like, you know, a one-and-done type deal. So it always makes me happy when uh, they do stick around. So I hope, uh, hope, hope the new guys, both him and Dr. Ol- uh, Tommy Oliver, both uh, stick around here and show up mm. at the next uh, shows. Mm. Next up, we have Pete is my bitch 69 defeating Wookie 32 to 38. Uh, yeah. I'll start this off. Yeah. I think, I think that uh, I think it's kind of says something when you both have Wookie and Otis losing. Like, at what point do you think that maybe the singles thing isn't working out for them? Maybe they should team up oh, again. Let's see where you're going here. Um, I just, uh, I don't know. I, I feel like they've definitely had success more success solo still like they have i remember otis went on like a four match winning streak not long ago i think he's lost Mm -hmm. the last couple but um wookie ended up winning the the road warrior title um but yeah as of like recent like this month and last month i think they both have struggled like both of them i don't know if either one has got a win to be honest with you but uh i don't know i i want to see him try to keep it solo for a little while but I definitely always did like them as, of course, they're a Kane Undertaker. So, I mean, Mm-mm. it's just match made in heaven there. But uh, yeah. if they do want to uh, go back together and team up again, super on board. Uh, I always liked Wudis as a tag team. So um, I'd be on board for it if they do decide to go do it again. Mm-hmm. Could, be, could be a good reunion to have them come back. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Have we ever had any reunions yet? Uh, we have not. No. No, not really. No, no okay. reunions. No reunions. Yeah, no breakup has will been be resurrected or something. Yeah, plenty of breakups. Oh, plenty of breakups. No yeah, reunions so, quite yet. No, no reconciliations yet. Yeah. And actually, I have been plotting a reunion myself. I haven't talked to either party, but I storyline. I have a cool storyline in my head, but obviously, I don't want to, you know, just force. Hey, I know you guys broke up, but you're back together. Um, I don't want to say anything, yeah, obviously, no. but I've been. I've been brainstorming some stuff, but well, uh, cool. Are cool. there kind of branching off to that? Are there any teams that have broken up that you want back together? Um, I mean, I did like Wootus. Uh, I, the regulators probably not. I mean, I, I did. No. You know what? I, I I say probably not, but I'm I'm a big fan of history, and I would like to see them one day come since they're the first ever tag team champions. I would like to see uh-huh. Crimson Cyborg and 3J Platinum somehow come back for a title match down the road. That'd be cool because I just like you know history stuff. 
But uh, like when uh, LOD comes back for a tag match, that kind of thing. Oh, it's like, yeah. oh, that's awesome. They 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 could pull this off. Yeah. yeah. And then they get squashed by uh, Warden and Barry Jesus, and Kane who are the stuff, tag team yeah. champions like five years from now still, and they never lost their yeah. titles. Yeah, exactly. So. Yeah. I think. I think like this team I'm thinking of, they've never really reached their potential, but I always liked them. Uh, I think it was they were called Tom Tom Popplestone. Oh, Tom Popplestone. Yeah, they only had two <laughs> matches. They they won yeah. their first match. They won their first match. They lost their next match, and I'm pretty sure who was it? Who was it that came to me? Was it Cam or was it? It was Cam. Cam came to me like, think- all right, I'm turning on Tom, and I'm like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, all right. I mean, I mean hey, I, that's I can't fault want. him. He's been doing great singles oh, wise. Yes, they both have done. If you think about teams that broke up and had the most success, that that's the team. Even though they were, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Tom's won two titles. Cam's been was the longest uh, Road Warrior champion. So they've had a lot of success mm. as singles. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, one of them's a face, one of them's a heel. So I don't know if that would be a thing. But who knows? In the future, you never know. You never know. Mm-hmm. All right, next up we have Jonathan C.T. Martin defeating Vitamin Yes. Uh, four, yeah, sorry, 58 to 45. Yep. Three shy of a perfect yep, at match, their highest score so far. And I think that's the highest score yep. anyone got themselves. So, yeah, this is the biggest pointer we have right here. Yep, match of the night there. Uh, I think Jonathan C.T. Martin came to me and requested that match. He's been coming to me a lot for his uh, house show matches, so... I think he said he wanted to face Vitamin Yes, so I booked it, and uh, damn, 58 points. Impressive. He, he would have literally beat anybody else on the card. Yeah, no yeah most he, points. Yep. Yeah. Would have toppled anybody, so. Not even a tie. He would have beat him, so that's damn. Can't, yep. like, it's this crazy maybe how. Oh. I was going to say, like, literally, might have just missed like, a bonus question or something, like or like one three-pointer. It's mm-hmm. all it was the difference on this, so yeah. It's crazy how he can rack up so many losses, you know, like we, we, told, we talked about earlier, tag team-wise. But then singles-wise, he just puts down a monster score like this. Yep. Yeah, and if, if you think, if him and Jun- uh, Junction were on a team in this on this show, I'm sure they would have beat probably anybody. So it's just uh, it's just weird how the tag team, their tag team is not pulling anything. I'm pretty sure if I, if I add the numbers up, I'm pretty sure they would have beat both Team No Chance and you and Beer Me Jesus. I'm pretty sure they would have beat both of you got both of your teams. Seventy six points. Yeah. I don't know. I don't have a calculator. I'm, an, I'm not a math magician. I fifty eight plus forty. Uh, yeah, it's it's easily yes. It's not that's in the ninety. Yeah, that's like a hundred points. Yeah, they they would have beat both you guys easily. They would have squashed both of your. They would have had ninety eight. Yeah, they would have like squashed you guys almost. So, uh, it's just bad luck, I guess. Their their team they're mm-hmm. they're cursed. The eloquent enigmas are cursed, I tell you. Yep, Kamika is cursing them. <laughs> there it is. They need to leave her chair alone. The pieces of her chair alone. That's what's yeah. holding them back. That's yeah. what's holding them back. All right. Next up, Bastion, it's your boy, defeated Hero Shin Moses, forty-eight to forty-six. That's a close. Oh. Two good scores. Two good, very good scores. Oh. Very close. Hero, yeah, I hear you, wooing. Hero put up a good fight on that one. Like, can't can't fault him there, but Bastion pulled it out. Bastion's a bastard. I keep saying that. He did. That's that, the shirt. Bastion's a bastard. Bastion the bastard. Bastion's a bastard. Yeah, uh, man, sneaky, like, big match scenario right there. Hito and oh, yeah. Bastion, that's, that's like, uh, that's high caliber upper card material right there. Solo, uh, well, one-on-one match. And the, don't forget, this is coming off of SummerSlam. With the death match, like this is his first match after what happened with Lee and I. Yeah. So like, much if he followed up losing to Hero, ooh, that's not good. That's not good. Yep. So that 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 was a tough one. I I see that match the way that's going down. Like it's he's fighting and clawing like he does, and he pulls it out, which he does. Mm-hmm. But yeah, good good win for Bastion on that one. But yeah. good trip. Oh, Hero almost had it. Hero again would have beaten most opponents with that forty six. That's still really damn good. And I know he is he is my uh, my stable mate and everything. But guys, Bastion is on a tear right now. Him him and Jut Jut are both on a tear. I think they they suffered one little slip up. I think at take o- uh, takeover. But other than that, these guys have been so so good. I'm uh, I'm I'm interested to see where they go. They are they are right up in the top of the tag team division, so 
be ready, Warden Bear Me Jesus, because uh, we're coming for them belts again, even though they've uh, they've slipped a little bit before. But you know, I did think after past, how past. badly they beat us at SummerSlam, quite literally a four times squash, that they would have had a tag title shot off of that. You would think so. But, I thought that was a, a given. But, but I will explain some of that when we get to when we talk about some Hell in a Cell here in a little bit. Okay. 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 I think I think I've always, I've always been a supporter of you know I was kayfabe, but I've always been a supporter of Bastion as a single star, and I I think a world title run is in his future. Mm-hmm. But I do like seeing him claw his way back up in the tag team, and then you know getting big wins like this. And I just I can't wait to see what he does in the future, like career wise, because I I think he's really good. Yep. Yeah, no doubt. It, it, he's easily uh champion material. He just hasn't been able to get his hands on a title yet. But don't worry, my boys are coming. My boys are coming. That's crazy. Because he's been here almost as long as me and he just hasn't won a title yet. It's okay. It's it's coming, don't worry. Well, Wait, don't forget, if not for the tournament, neither would have I, for Lee. Just it just might not be in the cards at the right time. Uh-huh. Um, yeah. He Bastion can beat anyone. Uh so it's just a matter of getting it. But so can Hero. Let's not uh sell Hero short here. Hero definitely can too. He just lost by two on this. So. Yeah, and as as we'll get to it in Hell in a Cell, he'll have his chance coming mm-hmm. up. That that awesome match coming up for that. Mm-hmm. And next up we have the GMSG. Defeating Tino thirty nine to twenty five. Yeah, for the record, twenty five would have lost to Fart Bucket by four. Yeah, oh wow. man, that's Tino. Tino, former world champion. Yeah, and this I'm wasn't shocked. in the cards. He's so been doing so good. I mean, it is that thirty nine's not good either. Let's be honest. Thirty nine's not the greatest. Definitely not the greatest. No. But uh, I mean, he lucked out. I I put him in that match. I wanted to give him a high profile match against a former champion. Uh, that GMSG came through. He's been coming through a lot. He beat me first of all. He got a big win over me. He's been doing good stuff lately. So I mean, he's he's earning his keep. He's doing good. Uh, Tino has been doing good. That's why I wanted to put these two guys together to see what would happen. And Tino just uh kind of just shit the bed. <laughs> he got twenty five points. <laughs> would have lost the fart bucket. So yep, yeah, by four, like decidedly. It's kind of all you have to say is he would have lost a fart bucket. So um so, yeah. yeah. It's kind of sad to see his descent from like the top to all the way to the bottom. Like he, he seems like he's gonna claw his way back up, but then something just stops him and he goes all the way back down. I can relate to that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Been there. I know what it's like. It's rough. It's rough because momentum works one way real good, but it's a bitch the other way. Oh man. Uh-huh. <clears throat> mm-hmm. So hey, hey Scott, what match is uh, coming up next here? Hey, you hey, what's know? next? Yeah, uh, I, me, Scott, defeated Legit Boss 2K 50 to 40. Uh, and I looked at our, our, our selections. It was like like one or two picks, but they were big picks. So, yeah. 50. That's a good score. That I is, will say that's a good dude, score based there, on what we've seen. Dude, that is a very good score. I'll give I'm it proud to, of my score. I will give it to you. There weren't many people that scored in the 50s. You yeah. hit the 50 mark. So, uh, yeah, kudos. in. Uh, legit boss did pretty good too, but man, five point um victory is pretty pretty freaking good. Ten point. Ten point. What did I say? Fifty. You said five. 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 Oh, sorry. Uh, ten yeah. points. Yeah, I'm, I'm good. Point. At, I'm good at math. But uh, so we'll we'll get to the details of the match. We'll talk about the write up. We'll we'll go to that next. But uh, yeah, because a lot this, of these other matches fun, didn't get one really. Uh, yeah, the, this match um boss wanted a while back because we never fought. I don't think. Uh, so we kind of wanted that match. Thought it'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Especially after literally two other matches kind of fell out because Boss and Woody was going to be a match at one point, and then mm-hmm. Woody you went for the the tag match instead. So I'm like, I'll fight you. You're the world champ, and then wasn't the world champ anymore. So that that's its own thing. But yeah, no, that was there. There's a good story that we came up with for that one. That it was not only in the write up, but this, the idea of what this match was. So I'm happy with that 50. I was worried because Ring of Honor type shows. Man, I can really suck at those sometimes. No, so. that was impressive. Hey, if you were facing me, you would have won the title from me. So I would have won the title. I would have won the title. Yep. Was, and, yeah, this good. is – when you go back on the last, I think, nine matches I've had, this is the second one I've won. 
Lee and I just yes. squeaked out over no chance by a point, and that's with one of them posting late and getting a deduction. You and otherwise, to... I haven't won in almost nine or almost ten matches. Son, you need and to... I got this one. You need to get some main main show match wins here. That's what you yeah, need. Yeah, well, that, the, the cool part about this one was how big of a turnaround I needed and how awesomely it got booked in what yeah. it is. It's like, no, this is this is that turn. Now, we've seen how low it can go, and here's the turn. It's We could not have planned this if we wanted to. It's really, really good. So. Yep. So what, what about... Uh, the write-up did you guys like? Because, I mean, obviously, Scott, you planned it. So, Woody, did you see the write-up? Does it, what did, uh, what did yeah, you think the write-up? Write I'll just throw my stuff out there. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea with coming off of the stuff with Lee, um, the stuff that you wrote, we talked about this at the SummerSlam re recap, but uh, the idea where it's like, I'm, I've lost it. Like, it's this, not, like, fully a crazy person but just like it nothing matters not and then like just choking out no chance right and then that's beforehand that's after leading, losing my title but then after getting ambushed and lee going off the roof and done um now it's just like nothing matters and my idea was like i'm still gonna come up for the match and she's part of the uva so that's bad that's bad for her mm. and the, like I, I for some reason it was like it's just a match it's just a match. Like this, that's kind of the mantra that's been in my head the whole time. Mm. Ring the bell. Just ring the bell. Ring the bell is how it, it kind of happened. And like, Boss is a former world champion. Literally just lost it. If not for the cash in of Money in the Bank surprising her, oh, would God. still have been world champion. Dude, Woody, you would all oh, Woody, you would not have won that shit if you. But hey, I, I mean, would not have rules. Would rules. have been, and I would have gone out there on this awesome comeback and defeated the world champion in a non-title yep. match. You stole that from me, Woody. That's you right. <laughs> um, Another thing I stole. Steal. You didn't even mean to steal that, and you did. No. Um, by the way, for the record, I still think that SummerSlam cash-in was just brilliant, perfect everything with the redemption and everything. It's so good. Um, so the idea here was literally, I told uh, Bomber in the write-up, I want to start with Lee's Lariat. It has to start with that. Bomber threw in the second one. <laughs> that was his idea. And then I pretty much won. And the idea, like, don't tap, don't tap, don't tap. It's just a match. So, like, kind of like losing it. And I don't want to say like a Chris Benoit, but kind of was a little bit. It's like, I'm just wrestling you. I'm just wrestling you. Don't tap out. Don't tap. Like, oh, what? This is not good. Scott's gone. Like, this is not right. Um, and then the win, I just kind of, like, peace out. I'm out of here. And then we get to the Warden thing, which I will explain that here for the record. When Warden put up his open challenge, I, within, like, a minute, went to Bomber and said, I want that match. Because the idea is, you I'm fighting you weren't everybody. The old, you weren't the only one. No. No, no. <laughs> and I'm glad I didn't have it. It's better. That That's funnier, too. But my idea was, I want that match. I'll fight the, the solution side. I'll fight the UVA. I don't, I don't care. Whatever. This is well before the death match. Mm -hmm. And then immediately Boss put up her challenge. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want Boss. Oh, crap. Bomber, I want both matches. We're not doing that. All right. I want this then, and we'll get to that right up. So th this is me now where I'm going after the UVA one by one. Like It's like the crow. Like this, That's one. I, and it's like I literally want to get um, you, obviously, Bomber, but I want mm -hmm. Jet and Bastion. Like, there, there's a moment in the crow where it's like, I don't care about you. I just want him. Yep. You can't have him. I see you've made your decision. Let's see you enforce it. Like, literally is where we're going with that. That's kind of the idea. So it's not going to be good for your boys. They'll probably beat me, but we'll see. Yeah, let's say we'll, uh, we'll, we'll I've see. I've never won that. We'll, we'll see. Yeah. <clears throat> but we'll see what we got. We got, like, five shows leading up to Survivor Series and whatever happens beyond that. So that's going to be interesting. Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, I'm still angry at the solution because where were you? You could have stopped this. Like, no one came to save us. But we're the outsiders. No one saves us. So... Oh, it's so good. I love it. It's everything I want. And oh fuck. What'd you guys think when I destroyed Boss and made her cry in the ring? It was definitely uh I don't know, I don't know how to explain like, it parallels a lot of stories going on right now within uh let's say Redhead losing it, Woody losing it, but Yours is its own thing entirely, and it's kind of brilliant in a way. I love that aspect. Um, 
I've said this on the main podcast, if you've heard this before, mm -hmm. where I like the idea where like the NWO was facing off with the top guys in WCW, and you've got no-name good guys. Whenever they win, they're calling out Hogan. And I'm like, that's what would happen. Like, they want to be part of the bigger war. They want to go after the champion. It doesn't matter if they're ever going to face him or not. That's mm -hmm. kind of what it would be. You get people in the UFC, they're like, give me a title shot. Well, they're, they're not in the discussion for it, but that's how you get there. So this idea where the war literally had a casualty at the start with Slammiversary, and it was me, and it like literally yeah. went to Lee, and it got even worse. Like, I could have just been like, yeah, I'm with the solution. Screw Bomber's side. And no. <laughs> no, know, we went completely different, and it's been so cool. It's been so Sting-like and AJ Styles-like. I love it. And you know what? Uh, now that you brought it up, I we kind of skipped over some of the. We probably should mention some of the Kate Fabe stuff that did happen because, you know, that's kind oh, of for like, the other write-ups. Yeah, we'll we'll do those. Sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, no, no this yeah. is the first of our. I, yeah, I completely yeah, forgot. We'll, yeah, the the other thing no, that we we'll, we'll get to the other write-ups for sure. Don't worry, we're not gonna skip that guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah Just yeah. Well, we're in this one, so we're talking it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh, yep. Yeah. Well, what do you think, Bomber, from the booking side of things? Because you've um, had this war. Yes. And all the stuff, and me being this lone wolf, just the fuck Baron Corbin. Yeah, no, I'm literally yeah, a, no, I am there's... literally a wild card in all of this. Yeah, no, there's been behind the scenes stuff where, like, um, obviously that everybody hasn't been seen some like some tug of war of. I've been getting messages from people like, "Hey, uh, we want Scott to be doing this," and um, I I actually was thinking like, um, that it was uncharacteristic stuff that like. Basically, I I can just say it. I, it's not a big deal. We can we can discuss it here. We're all we're all adults. If it didn't happen, we can talk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was basically it was Redhead came up and wanted to do a uh, wanted to have a tag team match at uh, Hell in a Cell with Scott on uh, her team, and I. It was originally actually Survivor Series. I remember leading there with Lee and I as mystery partners. Yeah, and see, I I, have, I haven't got yeah. all the details on that. I I don't even think I heard that part yet. But uh, yeah. But, but I was like, I think Bomber has plans for Survivor Series. So yeah, I was Survivor like, Series definitely so we gotta, is definitely We need to move out. it around. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but yeah, your your and Lee's characters were very are very different with what's going on with the the war. There's just no no telling where they're going to end up. In, yeah, like, we had much side. much deeper history going on, and yet, oh, I'm not I'm not going to side with the solution. I mean, we're still warring with them over the tag titles, and Woody literally took my Canadian title. Like, I'm not siding with you right away, or yeah, but then, at all, if even. But I'll fight Bomber. But yes, uh, exactly. See, go. It's, yeah. it's going to end up being uh, what's what side is the the bigger evil, or are you going to join the war at all in the end uh, mm -hmm. in the end game, which will be Survivor Series? So, yeah. Just, no, I've. I've if I tell people right now I have my entrance planned for Survivor Series, it's mm -hmm. going to be great. Uh, it's going to be fun stuff for that. Oh, so speaking of um, that, um, by the way, just as, this is to everybody listening. Everybody, uh, um, it helps out a lot when I'm doing a write-up because I have a lot to do, a lot to type up. If you do what Scott did, he basically typed up his stuff for me. Instead of giving me like... Uh, like a one sentence here. I want you to like. I, I want, want this to, do to this. happen. Yeah, yes, I, it I, is I'll, I'll much tell you right now. For me. I did that. I've done that a couple times. Slammiversary was the worst. I'm like, I'd like this, 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 and this. So here's my details. Here's my stuff. And he's like, can you just write it for me? Sure. Yeah. So I've done that ever since. Like Scott, yes. like the music starts. The ref does this. Like I wrote most of that. Yeah. But then you go in and tweak stuff. And I will tweak it, stuff to fit. make yeah to like slip some stuff and yeah. make yeah and yeah. adjust stuff. But yeah, that to everybody listening. If you want stuff included, if you want this and that, uh, typing it out will yeah. definitely help me out immensely. So <clears throat> just want to let everybody know that. So Now, yeah. I'll, I'll just close my part here for this match. Um, when you mentioned the redhead thing, too, like, I am the type that will sow seeds everywhere because I wanted a world title match. I still do. I've never had one. I want one. It'll happen. Maybe, maybe not. But... I'd be a fool to not try for it in things like the Slammiversary write up calling out legit boss. So that bit where I was calling out boss, saying I want like I'm gonna win this title, but yours is better, and boss is there. Boss never does house shows. Boss is the world champ there, and everything goes south for me there. And literally here we are at all in a house show and I'm facing legit boss. I'm like, oh the start it just ties. She was the first one to snub all that, and now here we are and I'm getting revenge on her. She's number one. Oh, it's, it's oh, so good. 
So, like, the idea, like, uh, Redhead and I, we're still talking. We're going to figure something out because I want match of the night. And if that's what it takes, that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. So there, there's that. Like, we're still fit working stuff out. I'm like, well, maybe afterwards. We can sow seeds now and do stuff. So when I had the, the, the maple leaves being spray painted, it was like, oh, stay away. I'm like, I'll put that now. We'll do little things here and there. I'll work with anybody for that kind of stuff because it's fun. Like it's, oh, yeah. And that, I love, I love the, the booking, quote, unquote, of it. Like, let's work some character stuff. But it's got to make sense, too. Yeah, that was... like you were saying, Bomber. It, you don't want to write stuff where, it's like, oh yeah, Scott will do this. I'm like, no, no, no. Ask me that. A ask me. I, don't say that he's gonna do this. But it's like, no, no. Here's how I would do it. We can work that. Mm -hmm. Don't just write. Oh, this happens. Mm -hmm. That's rough. I would never try to say this character does that without talking to that person for their character. Yeah, and by the way, that the whole Maple Leaf thing—that was just me forgetting. That's all that was. <laughs> that was that was just, that was me being me, me forgetting with all the stuff yeah. going on. That's all that was. Well, because not only that, you were sick. And coming back after like a five day weekend. Yep, I'm sure Woody's gonna of, bring of it up. Fantasy too. drafting. Woody's gonna so, bring it up later, but yeah, all his stuff that he wanted, I forgot all that. Yeah, yeah. So please read the Discord character chat because stuff goes in there as well in case we forget things. It gets slide. Yep. It's, all, it's all good. It's all... But anyway, what what do we got next? Well, what do we got next? What we got next is J D Onio. I don't think I've ever said that name the same way twice. Yeah, I never. J D. Facing Cam Popplestone, 45 to 43. That's the first loss I can think of from Cam in a one on one in a while. Yeah, since, yeah, since the, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and basically, that was, I just saw them <clears throat> typing in general chat to each other, like, hey, you want to face, you want to have a rematch? Because they already fought each other for the Road Warrior title in Cam 1. So they were at, hey, like, hey, you want to rematch? He's like, sure, let's do it. And I just saw that in the general chat on Discord. So I was like, okay, I'll book it. <laughs> so that's that's what ended up happening mm -hmm. there. But uh, some shenanigans went on in the match that uh, is going to be leading up to our Hell in a Cell match. Did you guys mm -hmm. end up reading the we did. write up? I think for, to, to go simpler, I think we can talk about our write ups. We'll go to those ones because we did skip over the other write ups too. Mm -hmm. um, well, and plus, well, that'll lead into Hell in a Cell booking as well. Yep. So I, I like the match. I like the, the two. Um, both those guys are usually pretty solid. I would have beaten both of them. I'm like, oh, that oh, won't do anymore. Don't worry. Kill them. Um, Kill. Actually, I would have I would beaten the next one. I would have beaten you guys. Yeah. I wouldn't have beaten Captain Charisma, but anyway. Um, no, I, I think that's that's a tough match. But again, it's on this kind of show. I don't want to say you can afford a loss like that, especially this one. But it doesn't really hurt that much. Like a two-point loss to JD is not bad. So and, it's it's easy to recover from that, but it's hard to keep momentum when this happened. And uh, Woody, you've been Cam Popplestone's biggest uh, supporter. So how did how did you feel about this uh, this match going down? Um, with JD and Cam Popplestone, mm -hmm. I I'm a big fan of Cam, and I was very pleased with this whole reign. And I've been I've been very pleased with this whole. Thing whenever he came back and was on that big win streak, but <clears throat> seeing him lose to JD, I mean JD is a he's an overall great GRPL competitor, and just seeing how close this match was, it still in my eyes puts Cam near maybe ultra violent top lock contention even with how great of a run he did with the Road Warrior title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, he did. There's no understating how well he uh, evolved and, and brought that title up to be a... Because I thought the title was going to be a ping-pong title, which it started out that way. Everybody defended it once, but it literally it was starting to ping-pong around until Cam got it, and he mm -hmm. uh, brought a lot of value to that title. So there's no understating that, that's for sure. Um, but man, JD, I still... I've, I've said it for a long time. Um... I, obviously, he's a giant troll on Discord. We don't always get along. That's that's kind of obvious. But he all, he is a solid uh, performer. So I mean, when you win, you win. So no, I mean, when he wins, he wins. I can't. No matter how we don't see eye to eye, he's moving up that card. And I said without a doubt, I know he's going to be a main eventer at some point. I can see that at some point in time. So. Uh, another solid win for him here. Just that's pretty much all I gotta say about it. Another solid win for uh, JD. Next up is a hardcore match: Spring Tigers defeating Nathan 8K 37 to 13. Yes, Fart Bucket would have won. 
We, uh, well, it was um, a hardcore, hardcore match, match though. So, yeah, he lost. It's a hardcore points, match. Yeah. Or fucking probably would have lost. Yeah, probably, um, probably would have lost. Yeah, but hardcore match because this. I will say this stemmed off of a uh, guitar being broken. I believe it was. It was a guitar. So it was, was a guitar on a pole match. Was like the little the flavor. Uh, um, yeah. So yeah. So we ended up with a hardcore match. Um, Spring Tiger has kind of definitively won this one, even yeah. with a thirty-seven. But that's a thirteen. So yeah, I, I I put some fun stuff in there where she came out there. There were actually two guitars involved in the write-up, which was fun. Um, because he obviously, it was a guitar and a pole match, so obviously you got to cl- climb up, get the guitar. But Nathan, being the dirty little heel, he decided he was going to use his own guitar as well, but it didn't quite work out for him. And Which Spring is Tigers, brilliant. I'm, yeah. I'm surprised that I've never seen that. So, yeah, yeah, she that's, outmaneuvered that's him and destroyed him. And, yeah, she, she, she kind of manhandled Nathan there. And, actually, kudos to him. He sent me a, a private message and said, you know what? I want a guitar on a pole match with Spring Tigers because of what's been going on in the character chat um, with mm-hmm. her review in my album and stuff. He said this would be a uh, so fun good. match. So that's great. Uh, kudos that to album Nathan review has been in Discord going back weeks. Like it keeps coming up for yeah. different stuff. <laughs> yeah, it's so, pretty great. Like I love, I love yeah. like that's like a TV storyline keeping on going. It's great. I love that stuff. Yep. So uh, kudos to first Spring Tigers for getting the big win and Nathan for coming up with the idea of the match. It was fun. Mm-hmm. That's good. That's living the gimmick. It's good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good. I love how show matches like that. Yeah. Yes, I hey, do. Speaking... Those are fun. Those are good. Those are good. Speaking of weird house show matches, Team No Chance, Buck N5 and Lily Pilly versus the Solution members, World Champion Woody and Tag Team Champion Bear Me Jesus going to a no contest, 76 to 76. You know what's crazy? Yeah. You know what's crazy? I know, obviously, there was no shenanigans by, like, copy and picks. But you know what's weird? Everybody in this match had a score of 38. <laughs> so, I'm not no. kidding. What are I the swear odds to God, that? I promise you. I, I'm, I mean, I hope those numbers add up. I think it was 38. Um, everybody. Oh, my God. Double check. Yeah. I, yeah, 38. Yeah, it was. Everybody. That would, that would do it. Buck and Five, Lily Pilly, Woody and Beer Me Jesus, you guys all had a total of 38. I, when I saw that, I was like, this what the fuck? No, this is not right. This I was no, like, honestly, something's going on here. 38's not a great score for this for this card. There's a True. lot of 40s in here. So 38 would have been beaten by uh, most of the competitors. Yeah. <laughs> so, But, uh, yeah, you guys ended up tying with the uh, the Money in the Bank holders, which I, there was a big discussion about them cashing in, and they still have those. Uh, they still have that briefcase. So um, Now, uh, amusingly, I remember, I think Warren was saying, too, like, Warden and Beer Me have never had a tie, never any of this. The one time Woody teams with them, the tie machine comes along and gives Beer Me a tie. It's like, oh, fuck. Yep. <laughs> yep. Yeah. It, <laughs> very, I think it was very early on. I think it, maybe late in the show, we were pretty much content that we were going to lose until we got the bonuses right. Because I think I differed on one. Really? And I think nice. that, yeah, I think that was the difference maker with that one. It was literally a two pointer kept you from losing. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that's great! Yeah, yeah. I was uh, no, that was the only tie on the show. The only no contest on the uh, the whole card. Question for you guys: I don't want to pull the curtain too back back too far with your solution stuff. But did you prepare for that one? Like Bear Me and Warden, the way they would prepare. Did you prepare the same way with Bear Me for that, or like how did you handle this tag match? Because you just wanted to have a fun tag match, right? So yeah. Well, what was your plan uh, on that one? Well, me and Bear Me. We we talked it over throughout the whole week, and we obviously had to get them in before Saturday because we were going to the event and everything. So we talked about it for the whole week, and you know that's pretty much it. I mean, we differed on some, like we picked the same picks, but we differed on where the points went. But pretty much, we were just on the same wavelength throughout this whole match. Yeah, and apparently Lily Pilly Buck and Five were also on that same wavelength with your yep. thirty-eight points. Now I didn't go in and look at the breakdown, uh, like to see what matches you guys got right and what matches they got right. But it's just, That's... I think the odds of that are insane that you guys all got thirty-eight. That's that's crazy. We we put a lot of points in Pentagon winning. We should have split it. But we put like really? ten points each on Pentagon winning. That's yeah. how Lee and I end up doing it. He'll pick one, I'll pick the other. So when one of us loses, the other still gets the points. And hopefully the other team both pick the other one. We we've had wins where Lee picked the one guy who won, 
and I pick the one guy who lost, and both of our opponents both pick the one who lost, we get five points. <laughs> there we yeah, go. We got us five what... points, and they get nothing. So it, it, that, that's how we, we ended up winning a lot of our matches. So, yeah, it's, it's pretty interesting how that works out. Yeah, we got we got that wrong, and then we split... Uh, I want to say we split the Hangman and Janela match, which, which was, you know, safe, I guess. Yeah. I mean, it was good. That was your guys' debut as a team, because at this point, um, Beer Me and Warden didn't know if they were going to be able to team again, so that's why I yes. think you wanted to be in the tag match with him, right, Woody? Is that what that was about? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. because... There's always been talk of me and BRMT and being in the future, and this was just uh, a little taste of what could be. Yep. And to be fair, I know Warden wanted a singles match. He just really wanted one. So yeah. Oh, he he got a uh, a match we'll on there. his own. Not quite singles, but he got a match on his we'll own. That's yeah. for sure. But here, here's but a fun I, fact. I, uh-huh. Oh. Yeah, go for it. I was going to say, here's a fun fact that I just uh, realized the other day as I was going through old Solution Twitter messages. Warden has been wanting to enter the singles division since January 27th, 2018. Oh. So only nine months. Yeah. <laughs> only nine months. I was going to say, storyline-wise, this is pretty great that we get one of the tag champs going against the tag team Money in the Bank holders, and it's a draw. It's a no contest. Mm-hmm. Like, ooh, ooh, what would have happened? Oh, the title, the title doesn't change, but it wasn't. It was... Was it because it was Woody that led to the, the tie, or what happened there? Oh, okay. So it, interesting development there with it being the money in the bank holders. For the record, Warden's score from his match we'll talk about right now was 42. Yeah. So if you do that math, that adds, you said 36 is what they had? So 38. add 38. So if they had 38, add 6 to that score, Should be and the cash-in gets you, what, 5 more? Uh, 10. 10 they would have won the titles mm-hmm. by, like, a point or two. So... <laughs> yeah. That's got to make them think, like, oh, we got this. We can do this. We know They're learning what they got to do to get that win, right? I will so, say this, though. They were, wise, I love that. That's good. They were a very indecisive team. Holy shit. The amount of messages Ooh. I've got from these guys. Oh, my God. They if if they need to get on the same page first of all to get their cash in sorted out because I've over that SummerSlam weekend holy the shit that week I should say <laughs> I got so many messages about what was going to happen what wasn't going to happen what might happen I'm like oh my god just just tell me when you know but um when it happens it's going to happen at some point they have a full year we'll see what happens though never know yeah. Never know when it's coming, and like I always like it, I don't want anybody else to know. So please, if you're listening yes. to this, Lily Pilly Bucking Five, please, for the love of God, don't let anybody know except me, okay? Please, <laughs> let's let's surprise you people. Let, let's other. let's because I'm about making moments. That's I'm not about like oh I want to know and nobody else knows. It's not about that. I'm about making moments where they're like oh like the oh shit moments, and those and, are the oh shit moments and stuff that I want. And that's. Get, I know get that memorable. happened in the next match. Yes, exactly. Because Gordon like, had an open challenge, a he, legitimate open challenge where yes. he had no idea who the, the challenger was. I remember him talking about this in Discord. He's like, that would be awesome to just not know ever who it is until the write-up comes out. Yep. And he had a singles match on his own against Captain Charisma, Banksy, and Redhead. <laughs> and okay. Captain Charisma won. Captain Charisma, 50. Banksy, 48. That's good. That's real good. Yep. Uh, Warden, 42, and Redhead, 38. Now, I know I said like the, third, the, the sub-40s were not great. That's still only four off overall. So that's good scores across the board yeah. for all of that. Um, mm-hmm. It was almost a five-way, but we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Um, well, but yeah. yeah, no, Warden, I know Actually. he was upset. It wasn't a singles match. Um, it was kind of hilarious in how that worked out. The write-up was fantastic in how it was like a goddamn Raw where everyone just keeps coming out and is like, oh, what's this now? Yep. It was so, so good. I yeah, loved everything I, about it. It was yeah, amazing. Yeah, let me lay this out. This is basically how this went down. Um, oh, be- one more thing. Martin, up? his winning streak ended with that. I know he was upset about that. But technically, yeah. he didn't. He wasn't he, the one who got the lowest score, but he, he doesn't care. He said that. So, yeah. And plus, he in the write-up, he did not get penned either. He did not get yes, penned. Yes, exactly. Oh, yeah. trust me. Hey, Warden, now you know what it's like when you're in a triple threat or something, and the Outsiders 
lose the match, but don't lose the match. Welcome to our world. That's what it's like. Now you know what this is. So, all right. So this is basically what happened and my whole thought process behind this. Obviously, Ward wanted this, so I was like, sure, we'll set it up. We'll we'll give you an opponent. Whatever. Uh, immediately, Scott came to me, as he already said. Scott came to me. He's like, I want this. And I was like, I would. I understand, but I know you want the thing with legit boss. I don't really want to give people two matches unless it's like warranted, unless it's unless titles are on the line. It's like a must, like with a Road Warrior title, which uh, we'll bring that up in a minute. But um, so I I declined Scott. I, I declined. I did decline Scott. Uh, Captain Charisma hit me up on Twitter. Said, "Yo, I want I want to face uh, Warden for the." I think first he asked me, "Has anybody?" asked for the match yet and i said no so i'm i said sure Liar! i said okay. sure you got it queensy <laughs> actually came to me before captain charisma and said i want that match against warden and as you see queensy did it she no showed or he i guess because we go by kayfabe here it's uh chris benoit queensy, the off. Yeah, yeah. queensy no showed redhead came to me said that she wanted it so first of all i said okay both Queensy, Redhead, both want this match against Warden. I'm going to book them against each other. And I will. T- and I told both of them, hey, by the way, I'm booking you guys in a, uh, a decoy match. I'm going to make you I'm going to make it look like you're facing Queensy. But you're not really like this is what I told Redhead. I'm going to make it look like you're facing Queensy. But don't worry, you're facing Warden. I did oh, the same. So I did the same uh, thing to Captain Charisma. And then oh, Banksy. So Banksy was the last one that came to me and said, I want to face Warden. So I, I said, you know what? More the merry, let's go. So, so if anybody came and said that they wanted Warden, you would have been like, all right, I, it's five. Now I it's was six. going so to would you add... draw a line somewhere, or would you just keep going with nope, everybody? I was going to add everybody who wanted who <laughs> uh, came to face Warden. I was gonna do that. And, oh god, uh, that's amazing. Damn. Yep, oh, and, it's, and he Warden, want, he wanted it to be a surprise. Yeah, Warden, you're lucky. Oh god, that was so good. So technically, he's a credit bomber. Uh, go ahead. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go oh, ahead. I was gonna say technically, if Queensy would have showed, and then you would have been in the match, it would have been a six way. Oh God, because uh, no. I mean, the storyline parts are great too. Because we had people not really involved in the war. This was like, I'll fight you. Like, yeah, I love just, that. That's good. They just wanted to um, face Warden, so there you go. To Bomber's credit, when he explained it, like he didn't want me having the two matches because I, I was committed to the one with Boss. Um, I'm like, well, I'd like to do this instead, and like, well, can we do something else where like it's interrupted or something? And we agreed on that. That, that was a good thing we yeah. did. And I ended up building something in the Discord chat. Again, we'll get to the right now. Um, but Bob, it was, you were cool about that, so I do appreciate that. That was a really cool idea. And mm-hmm. that was, um, that, like, we're back in the moments now. It's like, oh, fuck. Like, who knows when the music's going to go off and why. So that, that turned out cool. But Warden, God. Honestly, reading the recap was great. Reading his reactions in the Discord to him reading the recap was amazing. <laughs> that was fun, yeah. See, and that's what... He's like, like what that's the hell what is like. it a four-way? Oh, it's so good. It's so good. Exactly. And that's why I like the surprises, to get everybody's, like, mm-hmm. yeah, those kind of reactions. Those are the, that's the fun stuff. I love the fact that... I, and I never knew who, the, who was getting the match. I just knew that I... But I love the fact that you're like, yeah, anybody wants the match. Go ahead. Whoever accepts it. And if 12 people said yes, dude, I'm like, all right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> He said, That's "Open so challenge." <laughs> I'll admit there's, that. If there's I, your singles match, Ward. That's so good. If I wasn't in that tag match, uh, I probably would have asked to be uh, well, in that match. You would have been. You would have been in it. <laughs> no. you, I would have found a way to put you in it. I would have found a way to make it happen. Oh, that's. I love it. It's so good. Yep. Yep. <sighs> but yeah, that was a. Uh, that was one of the the main fun things that I had as far as the crate in the show goes for the uh, booking stuff goes for this show was the, and uh, to be like fair, there. Captain charisma would have beaten damn near everybody. Yeah. And uh, if you were in the match, you and him would have tied and the damn yeah. thing would have been a no contest. So thank God that didn't happen. <laughs> well, cause yeah, I would have hauled off and just done yeah. something crazy. So, everybody yeah. would have got a no contest. Oh, I would have cried. Oh God. That would have sucked. Mm-hmm. You're Scott welcome. Scared everyone off. That's Bank what bomber happened. for the oh the storyline would have been great. I would have loved that. It's yeah. like I would have started beating the shit out of everybody. Yep. Nobody's safe. That would have been like I got a head start. I don't want to enter the ring. I got five people I can beat up right now. Let's go. It would have been great. <laughs> um, speaking of beating people up, bomber, yep, road warrior champion, yep, successfully yep. retained against Ash, barely forty-seven to forty-five. Yep. I was close. Very, very close. Oh. 
Yeah, no, me and Ash, we've we fought each other before. Uh, I believe it's SummerSlam last year. So this is over a year since the last time we fought each other. So, um, no, it was very close. It, I don't even know. It must have been came down to like a bonus question or something like that. But yeah, it's very close. Um, as far as the write-up goes, I didn't really have a story going on with uh, Ash, and Ash isn't – he's involved with the own thing with Finn, so I thought – Yeah, that best of five, right? Yeah, yeah, since I didn't have anything going on, why not I, – I basically use this as a chance to kind of further along their story since I'm kind of mm. the odd man out in this. So I had Finn come down and uh, basically – storyline-wise, come down and cost Ash the match because Ash is up 2-0 over Finn in their best of five series, so mm – -hmm. Uh, try to get Finn a little more, uh, you know, momentum storyline wise, kayfabe wise, um, under his belt. Ca kind of cost Ash the title, and actually, like if you read it, it's like he's so pissed, like he's so, like he doesn't care about the title. I actually put like that he doesn't care about the JRPL, he doesn't care about anything. He just cares about beating the shit out of Ash and making Ash's life miserable. So, um, yeah, that's kind of where I went with that. But, and it's good. I, I like that idea of like interesting main event. In a way, it kind of felt like a raw. It's like, why are these guys fighting? Like, is he's he's two up on the the best of five? That's the Road Warrior. Champion. Oh yeah. Okay. And well, Ash. Let's, let's see these. Let's see what happens when these guys face. And it get, that's always interesting to me when two different storylines connect. Yeah. It's like, oh, what's going to happen now? And that that's what this felt like. It was really cool. Ash has been a very streaky competitor, and he's actually been really good lately. So I wanted to. Uh, yeah reward him with a title match. And by the way, I never asked for this Royal Warrior title. I didn't really want the, it just got caught up you in the You literally fell into it. It got caught up in the tournament of death by accident and uh, none of this was planned. Obviously none of this was planned. I didn't want to I mean, obviously I'm not going to say I don't want to be a champion, but none of this was basically planned. So this is kind of not like I, I just, I'm just kind of winging these things, so I didn't really you, plan on any of this happening. That's why the match you was know like what, slightly random. You know what you need to do? Give Broken Nerd that title match. Oh God. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah. I'm the Against for that. you. There you go. You want a title match? Face well, me. If, that's a if, that's if, story. That that's good. Well, there there's, you go. The well, there. I have a title match at Hell in a Cell this coming mm -hmm. weekend, so we'll see if I will if I win or lose. We'll get in there. Yep. Well, the rest of the write-up, there were some achievements. Established superstar that's getting a thousand career points. Hey, I got that. Yep. I didn't know that until like a minute ago when I scrolled down. Sure did. I have a thousand points. How many other people have a thousand, Congrats. Bomber? Uh, I can tell you right. I'm actually looking at it right now. We have. I figured. Yeah. There's only. Oh well, that's actually a decent amount now. Uh, here we go. Uh, Beer Me Jesus, Warden, Banksy, Bomber, Tom, GMSG, Woody, Green Machine, Super Hippo, Bastion. Vitamin Yes and Ash all have yeah. one. Green Machine thousand. was the first, right? The Green Machine was the first, yes. The yeah. first, Green yeah. Machine and a lot of first. us were in like the 900s. So, like, us first event, like, first month or so veterans are just statistically hitting that at this point. Like, yep. do you, I'm sorry, do you have it yet? Yes. Yeah, I'm in there. I'm yeah. at I'm at ten. Uh, one thousand eighty-eight is mine. Right yeah. Now. So yeah. So this just by virtue of being here for a while, we've got. Yeah, um, and here's the surprise as far as point oh, totals go. Lee doesn't. Damn it, Lee didn't make a thousand. Fuck. No, Lee doesn't have a thousand. He's Shit. at he's at oh, eight fifty two. Oh, um, okay, he's a bit, he's a bit off then. Okay. <laughs> Banksy is number three, so that's a kind of oh. surprise name you wouldn't expect. Overall, Banksy is uh, number three overall. So I would expect uh, to be up there, but not not third. That's cool. He's that's third, cool. right behind, um, of course, Beer Me and Warden, as you would expect. Yeah, those guys are just monsters at points. Yeah, and they're so. they're sons of bitches. I agree. Uh, we have the triple threat. Win a triple threat match. Peanut. He had not won a triple threat until now. Surprisingly, I mean, I guess he doesn't win too often. So that's, no. Yeah. But again, it's a, it's the weird statistic thing. Uh, here's the, something else. Now that's teamwork. Sixty-five plus points in a tag match. Woody. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Woody and uh, Woody got it with Beer Me uh, Jesus here. Yep. So Beer Me yeah, had it, but still... Woody hadn't had it yet. So you got that achievement, Woody. There you go. Sixty-five plus points in a tag match. You not, didn't have I'm that. Not yet. A lot of, yeah, I'm not in a lot of tag matches. No. So. Yeah, our uh, one, our one run didn't uh, didn't quite get that high, and then you yeah. bl and then you bloodied me. So you know, and then I, you know, there's always the future. And, yeah, and then we the have, geez, yeah. Then we have score forty plus points in the match. Two new guys, wrestling Ferrara and Doctor Tommy Oliver. We mentioned them before. They did win the achievements. Yep, first uh, night got a debut of, uh, achievement. So yeah. good stuff. So the write up, I'll just go through real quick here. <laughs> it starts off with in one of the bigger shocks of the night, Peanut shows up at a house show. And he won. So yep. yeah, like 
the, the write up the bomber does, he puts a lot of work into this. Um, I'm, I'm going to say this every time. Woody, I know you'll agree. But bomber will literally spend like a day or two or four writing these write ups. And they're awesome. Uh-huh. He puts all the characters in the storylines, requests from 9,000 different people. I do also for forget. 8,000 so. different things. And his own stuff that he comes up with. Anyway, it's all cool. It's all awesome. So we have that in there. Mossdap destroyed rookie sling blade. Uh, the Daddy King members like it, some stuff just kind of summarizes it in. Um, there's Tommy Oliver in there and wrestling Ferrara, and a lot of new blood, a lot of veterans. One, and then we have the eloquent Enigma's luck turning around. Well, maybe. <laughs> well, we, the eloquent Enigma's luck. Yeah, they've been losing a lot. But They've had both the of roughest them, stretch. Yeah, overall, both of them got singles wins on this show, so their luck did turn around, and it was all because of Redhead actually in the write up. If you read the write up, Redhead yep. helped both of his allies win. So Red, now Redhead's just gone like off the deep end. Yes. You say I'm crazy, like I'm like vigilante gone not so crazy. I'll fight anybody, get out of my way. Redhead's a psychopath right now. <laughs> yes, like licking. Like we'll get to that when we get to the Warden match, but like. What is okay? Sure, <laughs> like so. It's it's interesting to see like this how this war is taking its toll on people. And the thing that and I just like the thing yeah, I didn't yeah. expect is that with the blissful enigmas right now, since they're allied, they're part of the alliance, the ultraviolet alliance. Um, yes, they have had some unexpected turmoil. If you've been reading the past several uh, shows backstage, mm-hmm. especially with John's disappearance, that led to some turmoil, and now. Uh, Redhead, basically, if you read the write-up, Redhead's trying to make good on being the leader of the Blissful Enigmas. Like, you know what, guys, I got your back. And she did come in and come through for both Junction and uh, Jonathan C.T. Martin. So Yeah. Uh, Redhead hit the ring with a steel baseball bat with a steel nail in it. So, <laughs> yeah. yep. here we go. And then, and then... It turns out that it was created from sure they stole from Cami Cat. So yeah, there's there's some lore happening here. It, it's some it's some fun stuff. It's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Um, then we have my match. Yeah, we talked about this a lot already. I'm not going to go through it again. Um, I will say again, I love the fact that I've got a version of AJ Styles' Evil Ways theme, but it's like this glitch hop version, like my regular theme song. It's um. But yeah, we went through this quick, but I love my chance of like give me a reason and ring the bell and this like it's weird, like it's it's still a wrestler who's gone kind of crazy. So he's gonna wrestle you when you're in trouble. Like that's it's like when Bret Hart goes nuts, he's still gonna make you tap. Like that's the kind of thing is, is where it comes from. So yeah. Um the part I like at the end though is I got the standing ovation, the crowd's never been so so behind me ever. I did not expect that. Oh yeah, that is basically awesome. this was but kind of obvious. This is kind of the turn for Scott as far as the crowd getting behind Scott. Basically, is kind of yeah. this. This was the show where the got the crowd kind of is starting to get behind Scott. They've literally seen me go through so much shit, even though I've been a bad guy. Or, mm-hmm. They're like, "There's only so much. Like, we stop it. Stop beating on him. What the fuck? Yep. Like, don't don't take his title. Don't don't hurt his pride. Don't kill his friend. Fuck. Stop." Oh good! He, oh thank God! He's oh good! He's winning. It's just it's almost like the storyline was written perfectly. Mm-hmm. No, I just picked shit for like seven matches in a row. So now, it if, turned out perfect. If on only this. you would start winning on how on uh, main shows. We'll see. Oh, what we'll happens. see what happens next match. We'll talk about Hell in a Cell in a minute. Oh, it's gonna be good. I better not lose that fucking match. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no, I like how it, like legit boss is the first victim. Jared Pills on notice. I'm out for revenge. It's great. Mm-hmm. Um. Uh, the, and the idea there, like, uh, like I said, I still, well, we're, we're gonna get to the warden thing, but I'm fighting everyone right now. So I mean, the things need yeah. to be reconciled before I'm a true face if I'm gonna go that route. But this sure as hell seems to be the right path. Like, hmm, this could work. Maybe uh-huh. this is the thing. So I like the fact that things went this way to to turn things around. It's, it's pretty fun. Um, we then have Cam Popplestone versus JD, a rematch from the Road Warrior title, like you said, Bomber, it's anniversary. Mm-hmm. Um, they came to war and had the hardest hitting match on the card. Um, and I like that you put here, like, no one had a clear advantage. And then the lights went out. Yeah. And then a loud heartbeat was heard. And mm-hmm. then a crash. And then Cam was laying in the ring in some kind of black gunk. And JD was surprised. And then Cross is there, oh no! Yeah, up on, on, up on top Cross. of the uh, Titan Tron, I believe it was. I think, I wrote. Demon I think Cross that, is that where so I put good. it? That's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Demon Cross is 
amazing. That's using the pick so good. Yeah, and I, I hope that. and I hope he's cool with this. He never I've never seen a word from him. This is all just me <laughs> just making shit up. I hope he's okay with I mean, I he might not even read any of this. Who knows? He might but, have no idea. He's yeah. like, "Oh, it's got the demon picture on my thing." No, yeah, that's he, cool. like, he, he may not even up. he might not even look at that. I have no idea, but I'm yeah. He's been doing good and I've I'm rewarding him from for uh like giving him some good character development, so uh, he's mm-hmm. been doing pretty good this year. He's actually, I still think he's a good candidate for comeback kid of the year. So we'll see if he oh, can actually right. keep it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a couple uh, front runners for that. Now, uh, it says at the end here, he, uh, JD and Cam, I think it's JD, right? Yeah, we'll go one on one at a hell in a cell in a submission match. Someone must say I quit or tap out. So you're building a match in that uh, one. Cam there, and so. Cross will. Cam- Kevin Cross. Cross, forgive yeah. me, forgive me. It says he, so I wasn't sure which one. Yeah, and this is all stemming back from SummerSlam where uh, Cam came out during my match afterwards to save Cross. I believe. Wait, hold on, hold on. He came out to confront me, and that's Cross right. basically turned. That's when he turned into the demon form, you know. And uh, that's basically the stem of their match. That uh, Hell in a Cell. I will say I did not see that coming without all those big nets of like the darkness. Uh, I thought there was someone else. Yeah, I thought it was the debut or something. I did not expect it. Yep, but nope. I love that. Day That's one, good. day one, I was like, I gotta. I, I was planning on giving something for uh, Cross, and I yep. mean, obviously, natural Finn Balor. It's I went it's, with, it's the, uh, good. Was, went yeah. with him. Well, yeah, like I said, I love I love the seeds. I love putting seeds. things here and there. So. I think, Having that come out was really good. I also think it actually helped because he made it to the finals of Tournament of Death, too. He actually mm-hmm. won. He made, he got several good upsets and made it to the finals. So I think that made it a bigger impact, too, that he actually did very good to get there. And me, storyline-wise, I know, I know I am glad I won, but I was almost actually rooting for Cross. So that I know that doesn't make a lot of sense, but storyline-wise, if he would have won... I would have had a whole lot more plan for him as the demon. He would have came out as the demon is what my actual plan was if he won the match over me, but it ended up not being that way. So I didn't want him to lose as the demon. So I made it happen afterwards. If that makes sense. You know how much I like, I I said before, like me winning the whole Canadian title, but leading up to it, I'm like, what if I lose? That'd be so good. Look where we are now. Sometimes the loss is better. I'm like, oh, that's that's cool. Yeah. So that, that turned out pretty good. Um, so, and yeah. we talked about this right up a bit before, but guitar and a pole match, ladies and gentlemen, Nathan. Yeah, that was fun. And this this was all you was, was, uh, coming off of that idea for the guitar and a pole. Yeah, it's a and, hardcore match. And but you it's know guitar what? I, and a pole I, match. This is another thing. I, I a lot of this. I think this was all pretty much me just making stuff up. But I actually did miss on uh, GMSG sent me a entrance thing with a cello and stuff. I, I fucked up on that. I missed that. I. <laughs> I, I did not include that. I forgot it. It actually was sent like a week before the show Ooh. or something like that, and I just I completely forgot it. That was my, my fault. But, yeah, uh, that was not included in Spring Tigers' entrance and everything. So that was my fault. But still, I think it still ended up being fun. It ended up being a fun match between the two. Mm-hmm. And next up we have the Warden's Open Challenge. Oh, yeah. So Warden comes out with his tag title, slightly intoxicated, and tells oh, the course. crowd he got things got rowdy, and he wants someone to come out and face him. And then Bliss hits, and Booze Phyllis Redhead comes out. So we already saw Red earlier. Now she's coming out for a match, um, and it's going to be the first step on the path to Woody. So like like me, point toward the yeah. By the way, Woody, the she she very has good, her her uh, sight set on you, buddy. So mm-hmm. uh, Redhead, Redhead. Yeah. No, I heard she likes licking people, so no thank you. Yeah, well, you got you got incoming, coming for you, buddy. buddy. You got so... you got incoming. Um the the UVA has one mission and it's to eliminate the global solution. So as she got in the ring saying I accept the challenge, I mean Boogeyman starts up and Captain Christmas comes running out. It's like what? So Redhead was not happy. And Cap got in the ring, took the mic from her. So she's like crazy from earlier and Cap's like, nah, I got this. So I, I like that just defiance of the character and the, the confidence, which was backed up with the fifth score. Yeah, I had and to make like, him I don't... confident because he actually yeah. won the match. Well, and the best part is he's like, I don't care about the U of A or the, or the solution. I yeah. came to fight, and I don't have a match. So that's what I love. Like, he's not even part of the war, but he's there, which was kind of like how All In was. You got all the Bullet Club guys and all this and that, and suddenly 
Pentagon's here. Okay, like it's why what? Okay, so that was really cool and how that worked. Um, Warden called Cap a regulator, which got a laugh and said, "Sorry, Redhead answered." Uh, Cap didn't care, said, "Ring the bell." And then all of the lights played and Banksy came out. Now things are, are getting crazy because Banksy, it's the year of Banksy, right? We're still in the year of Banksy. What happened to Banksy? Banksy had a rough patch. So Banksy wanted to fix that and even said, it's supposed to be the year of Banksy, what's going on? So this is a good way to turn things around and okay, apparently it's a fatal four-way. It's crazy. I love, I love it. I love the fact that if 18 people accepted, I keep, we would keep going for 18 people. Oh, God, yeah. I, I love the idea of armor. That is insane. Like... Oh, God, I wish more people accepted that match. That would have been great. Um, Morton looked very confused, but he's like, what? And then Redhead just decked him, and there was a brawl! And then my music hit. And the crowd just goes nuts, like, what the fuck is happening now? So I came out, running at Warden. He comes up to meet me. I start choking him, yelling, where were you? And as I go to hit Warden, Bomber, what did you do? What did you do that has never happened before? Oh, well, yeah. I mean, obviously, I came out to... I mean, I wasn't there to help you Warden. You came out to save the man? Definitely didn't come out to save Warden. I came out there to punish you, basically. And it actually ended up helping <laughs> Warden, yeah. That's the storyline. Bomber it, came it, out. It <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Bomber, Bomber came out. Bomber was the solution. I mean, have you seen before, Bomber has had people arrested before, and this yep. time he's done it again, but this time he's done it to Scott, because yep. he doesn't want, you know, you know he wants Scott interesting. to suffer you, as much as possible. You've never thrown that kind of power around against me. Yeah. You, you, you hadn't done that yet. You, we've fought in yeah. main events even, but we've never been like, I'm the GM. You hadn't done that to me yet. So that's, mm -hmm. I like that. That's interesting. That's, I've gone too far. <laughs> Yep, and we, it tied into the graffiti that in the hotel rooms that you were telling me about. Now, uh, that was the thing where I was like, I, I can't not do promos, but yeah. how do I do like the silent whatever guy in the rafters promo? I know, I'm going to graffiti up the, the posters, and yeah. then I'll like do all the hotel stuff. And I went, oh, that's perfect. Who's going to stop me from the match? Security guards. <laughs> They're the ones who do it because I vandalized the hotel room. That'll work. That's good. So I, I fed that in, and we had that happen for the reason. So, yeah, I... Uh, I spray painted the maple leaves on all the hotel room doors, except for a little bit boss, because that makes it weird. Um, and I got arrested for that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And then the match continued, because Redhead came up and did it. Redhead just continually went after Warden this whole match. Um, yeah. This, this nonstop, which was pretty great. Um, so, where... Oh, sorry. You you take it from here. Oh, I just uh, wanted to this, explain... Your, your feelings on Yeah, this. no, I just want to explain the ending with... I had this vision of both, first of all, both uh, Redhead and Banksy have the same finisher. It's the rock bottom. So that one's called the rock bottom, one's called the bliss bottom. So I envisioned both of them hitting at the same time. Oh. Yeah, and it, one of them going for the, like, going for the pen at the same time, but the reversal, like, I believe, how did I have it? Captain Charisma... Hold on, let me, I'm reading through it real quick. I don't even rolled remember. Rolled around and got a calf crusher. Yeah, I got it right here. Yeah, he, oh yes, rolled it into a submission uh, move. As before Banksy could get the pinfall, uh, Redhead tapped out before he could get the three count. So since Banksy yep. did have a high, had the second highest score, I wanted to make Banksy remain strong because it's only two point difference. He did score a very good score. Uh, I wanted to make him look like boom, he's right about to get the pin and get the win, but Redhead taps out before the three count. And mm -hmm. uh, Captain Charisma gets the win, and that that is gonna allude to a Banksy Captain Charisma match going uh, in the future. So, because now Banksy's mad because he was about to win. Banksy was about yep. to win. He's getting screwed over, and now that can lead into another match uh, between the, or into a match between those two. Now the great thing too here is that. Banksy just lost it, started beating Warden with a chair. Yes. Yeah, he and wanted to ref, freak out, yeah. And, yeah, that, I, I really like that. Like, that's that's where the cool storylines really... On, yeah, that's on him, yeah. That's, he wanted that, yeah. yep. Security came out, another tough point. So that, that goes back to what I was saying. Like, these losses actually are building the character in a better way. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it sucks to lose legit. Like, I don't want to lose, but I'm going to work. Yeah. So that's cool that's happening with him. Mm -hmm. But then, when Warden was busted, Redhead crawled in, and licked the blood and like started laughing as the crowd chanted, sick, sick, sick. Yeah. So 
that's again more crazy character, and this is some fun, fun stuff happening right. Now. I really like it. So. Yeah, Redhead wanted to do the blood spot, um, and I really like that spot, but it it was very hard to put in after a loss. So it almost to me it felt a little unnatural as far as she tapped out and stuff, but um, I really did like the spot, so I still included it in there to mm-hmm. you know at, for like uh, Redhead's character. So. Um, I think there's enough time after the like the, yeah. the chair hitting and the security guards and she's exactly. kind of come to and crawled in and done it. Yeah, it, it still works. Like yeah. you can see that. Yeah. Yep. So. So yeah. So that was that. That was that. There was that match as far as being involved with uh, kayfabe stuff. That was the most involved match of the show, and I had a mm-hmm. lot of fun with that one. So. Yeah, and the the whole thing I, I liked. I like the idea right now of my music hitting and the crowd going like, "Why is he coming out to fight war?" <laughs> like why he, yep. he doesn't like the UVA Warden solutions like no I don't like anybody right I'll fight anyone like it, that's and... that's the best part so that's I love that that happening during this in my head just makes it like you don't fucking know when it's gonna happen also like that was during a match that's cool shit yeah and I will apologize to you Woody because you did send me something that you wanted me to include and I forgot about putting it in there. So I will. Yeah. Uh, for, yes, yeah. I know you weren't happy, and I'm. I'm sorry. I apologize. There's a couple of things that a couple of people put it that that GMSG wanted me to put the thing in with the uh, the entrance for Spring Tigers, and I forgot that. Um, but yeah, that, that's my bad. It's not like I didn't want to put that in. I forgot it. That was my fault. So no, I, yeah, that's fine. I just I rectified it by just putting what I had planned in the character chat, and uh, yeah. that just leading to our future match with me and Scott and Boss that we'll talk about later. Yep. Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll get we'll cover that one there because I mean we got to talk about Bomber's main event here. Um, I didn't realize that you guys fought at SummerSlam last year. Uh, yeah, I, I looked I it. Up, I, I looked you it said up it, but see... it never, I never connected that. So, yeah, yeah. I just randomly looked up. I was like, did we ever fight each other? And I saw that it was almost a year from this date that we fought each other. So I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. So I put that. I included that in there because I had no idea either. <laughs> it's been a whole year. I, I didn't remember that. Yeah, but yeah. So that was the main event. I mean, like you said, you already talked about it earlier, how Finn came out and doesn't care about anything. and it yeah. just like, the, the final thing of the show was Finn putting his boot on Ash's throat, posing as the show came to a close. Not you retaining your title. Yeah, like I said, I that. literally... That's awesome. That I literally tried to use this... The spot. Yeah, I literally tried to use this as to build up more of the Ash and Finn um, story that they're doing with their Best of Five series because... Uh, they both have been very consistent, and they've been around. Like, Finn does not do house shows and stuff, but he's been around and very consistent for a long time. So they both have been here for a long time, and I wanted to try to get them some spotlight and stuff. And, again, mm-hmm. I didn't plan on me even being in this match with this goddamn title. So, uh, um, so yeah, I just used this as a way to help them build their story that they're going with right now. So I tried to make it with for them. Even though I won. That's very, that is, but that is, like, literally, it says here that uh, B- Bomber got the win, that pushed Ash away, uh, put Ash away, and Bomber remains World Warrior Champion. That's the last we hear of Bomber. The rest is Finn rolls in, smacked Ash, screened at him, and everything. Like, yep. I don't even know where Bomber went. Like, he just rolled out of the ring and was watching, yep. like, what the hell's going on now? Like, just the, the focus the is on these two guys. That's cool. And That's if you cool. look, if, the funny thing is, I actually did the same thing for during the Hell in a Cell match when I won the Tournament of Death. Between I wanted uh, Cam and Cross to start their little feud. I actually had Bomber walk up the ramp like scared uh, and get out of there as those two. It's almost it's very it is very similar. I will say that it is a little similar. Um, God, you did the same thing when Woody won the Canadian title. You pieced out right away and ran up to the VIP area. Did I? Oh well, uh, yeah, that was yeah, that was yeah, yeah, that was a little different because that yeah, but but somewhat the same yeah. You ran out. You didn't you didn't win it, but you were like, where'd where'd Al Bomber go? Oh, he's up there yelling at Woody and I. Yeah, I actually lost that one. You got yeah yeah. Well, I got the low score. Yeah, it was it was a close match. Uh, match. So that was mm. all in. Yep. Um, as you always say, Bomber, the house show matches don't have as much importance in the storyline and stuff like that in the kayfabe. But as you have also said recently. They do. <laughs> like well, there, there is stuff that can happen. Certain, like, uh, okay, certain things. You, you don't will... have to show. You're not punished if you don't. Yeah. But hey, cool things can happen if you do. We can have some fun on these. Like, not that we don't have fun on the other ones, but they're not as rigid. So let's have a tag match with Woody and Bear Me. Why not? Like, it's that kind of stuff. Exactly. Yeah. It's nobody's gonna be punished. 
fun things can happen with like the guitar and a pole match, those kind of things go down. Um, as far as pushes go, wins and losses will only affect other house shows like that we'll talk about like later on at another time with um if if you do good on Ring of Honor shows, I'm gonna try to, I'm I'm gonna try to like going forward make you higher up on the card for like Ring of Honor shows, if that makes sense. It won't really affect your yeah. like main card stuff. It'll still it'll affect your like house show stuff, but not your main card stuff. Because I don't want to punish people. I don't want to have people miss out because they don't watch Ring of Honor or TNA or sorry Impact. Um, you know, because that's just not fair. Because not everybody. That's not mainstream stuff. So, but, yeah. But yeah, fun things will happen, and I always obviously encourage everyone to do it if they want to. It's fun to exp- expand your horizons and watch more wrestling. Um, Absolutely, you'll find some new stuff that you never even knew you liked. That's the good part about so, it. Any other comments, or do we want to jump into the uh, Hell in a Cell? quick breakdown because i don't want to spend all the time because there's a lot of matches we don't need to talk about each one in detail yeah yeah there's we can probably almost just hit some of the uh some of the number one contender matches and the main Mm -hmm. card probably well we can go through what some of the matches are um yeah i'll just all those start on it opening match oh look it's me versus fuck bucket oh yeah yeah i guess it's my turn is that what this is it's your turn hey it's your turn man my turn all right. You've lost like You're what? You're going to lose to the bucket. You've No. Oh god. You've <sighs> lost you've won one out of eight like main show matches. Uh, I mean, it's your time. It's your turn. I like the storyline idea that the kind of thought of it too. It's like Scott's the loose cannon. He's unreliable. The opening match if he shows up, he and shows it's up. Also, the solutions that little, works. Uh, solutions little mascot guy. So, we'll see. Oh, I goes. told Woody, get him trained. I'm going to put him down. <laughs> so, but that, honestly, ironically, like, I'm not going to give you crazy write-up stuff. It's the goddamn opening match. I get it. But yep. I have a, the basic little idea of how this works overall in things. So mm-hmm. even this match, because he's Solution, I have a plan. So, <sighs> fuck, it's my, it's my turn. Let's see what happens. Mm-hmm. Um, we got Brandon23 versus Real Deal. We got Wrestling Ferrara versus Queensy. Oristella versus Accelerator. Zion versus CJ Blackthorn. Well, that There's first, of all, first of all, first of all, Zion versus ahead, CJ Blackthorn. That's the two two jobbers going at it because CJ lost a fart bucket and Matt Zion. Oh my God, Matt Zion Matt somehow Zion. is the fucking worst. I don't know how he's Matt the Zion. Worst. This is Matt Zion. He started yeah, he's out lost. good. But... I lost nine matches. He's lost nine months. Of yeah, matches. yeah. So, so that's gonna yeah. be interesting. But yeah, keep going. You're good. Uh, we got a hardcore match, Cade Gailey versus Peanut, which that's, is very intriguing. That's about. what I was talking about earlier. Cade Gailey wanted a rematch against Peanut because he lost, and he was very angry that he lost to Peanut, which rightfully so. So was I. And I got a rematch, too, and I I wanted a death match against him. So, hey, more power mm-hmm. to you, Cade. Uh, good luck there against Peanut. Uh, now, we also have Sling Blade versus Frenchie. Oh, uh, you skip Vitamin I, Yes Rab. Oh, vitamin forgive yes, me. Rab. Vitamin Yes versus Rab. Yes, sorry, sorry, sorry. Um, Vitamatis versus Rab, Sling Blade versus Frenchie, XI, VILI versus Nathan AK. So if that's Roman numerals, we got a lot of numbers on that one. Yeah. Uh, 3J Platinum versus Bad Guy George. We have the Eloquent Enigmas versus Team No Chance. Uh, Wookie versus Hebrew Hammer. And if you guys want to jump in, just go ahead. I'm just going to keep reading. Mm-hmm. Uh, Green Machine versus JD, Banksy and Captain Charisma. Tino and Spring Tigress. The number one contender match for the tag titles. CM Carlito and Super Hippo versus Twin Mazement. Look at these boys going at the top. Mm-hmm. And Breaker versus Voodoo Dreamer versus Alaska Brown versus Kyoko in Ultimate X. And the solution, John and AK versus Redhead and TB666 as our kickoff. Yeah, that's match. interesting. Yeah, that's There's interesting. There's some interesting matches in there. I okay. love. So, Palmer, I have one question. Yeah, sure. Why is the one contender match on the kickoff? Are you talking about the the tag team there? The tag, yeah. Why is that on the kickoff? Um, I I didn't have any other matches to put it over. I mean, obviously, all the title matches are going to be on the main show. So right. Um, I, I the Tom versus GMSG. Those are two upper card guys going at it. Best <laughs> of five match. That I mean, I don't want to like go over the card as we, uh, you know, the main show. But basically, it just it just this is a stack. I think this is a very stacked show. And, oh, it is. We'll get into it. Yeah, and I, I, mean, I don't. I just it just didn't make the cut. I mean, it, it is a big well, match, but it just didn't. Yeah, it just didn't make the cut. I mean, Even Tino versus well, we'll Spring Tigress is. Uh, yeah. I feel a very high profile match. So's uh, I mean, Green Machine JD. Yep. 
I mean, hell, bummer. You main evented the last show. You're opening this one against Otis for the Road Warrior title. God, goddamn title. Yeah. Um. <laughs> again, all this not planned, but yes. Yeah. Uh. We'll talk about. I like that how a little you're trapped bit. in it now. Actually, it's I kind am, of an and thing. I am going to be you're fight- a victim of your success. And I'm fighting in two title matches, which I didn't want, but oh, I'll, I'll get yeah, into that we'll in a little bit. But a couple things I wanted to highlight on before. Uh, what are you going to hit a couple after? Uh, I mentioned some, but um, the first of all, Rav versus Vitamin Yes. I the thought behind that match was I looked up I was looking on Vitamin Yes's profile and stuff, and I saw he got a win over Matt Zion. I know he's been struggling a little bit since he lost his uh, UV title, the Ultraviolet title, and I said, hey, why not uh, get another match against um, a match against another Jabba Radio guy? So you know maybe that'll move him a step closer towards a achievement because some people like those, or if you don't mm-hmm. care about him, that's fine too. But um. Another one, um, Wookie Hebrew Hammer. I think that match needs to be touched on real quick. Uh, Hebrew Hammer has fucking hit a landslide. Hebrew Hammer was six and zero or five and zero on the path to greatness, and he has slid down major. He he lost to he lost a Victor Green like three times. He lost a Tino. He lost to um, I think he lost to one other person. I believe. And I mean, Wookie is, he's been around since the beginning, so he's definitely no slouch, but it's going to be interesting to see if Hebrew Hammer loses again. If he loses again, man, he's going to find himself down in the bottom of the card. He's going to have to work his way all the way back up, but he was, he was right up at the top and he has slid down big time. What do you guys think about Hebrew Hammer's uh, little slide here? Uh, I can relate. I know, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's a tough one. I think he can come back from it. Mm-hmm. Obviously, but yeah, it's hit him hard. Uh, like I said, I've I've literally gone through the same thing, and it takes a lot to get back from it, and it's a rocky road. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, the storyline potential is fantastic as of now, honestly. Yeah, it's really sad to see how far he has dropped because I I thought he was really you know he, I still think he's really good. I mean, he even has a, a win over me, and yeah. I thought he would just go on uh, you know bigger and better things. But it's just it's just disheartening to see him, you know, loss after loss. And hopefully he can rebound with this. Yeah, I mean, I I hope I didn't send him up for I put him up against Tino at I think SummerSlam, which is a high profile match. I mean, even though Tino hasn't been as like top notch as he was in the past, Tino is still a former world champion. Um, so that is a tough match. And he went against Victory Green, who had dude Victory Green guys. Sleeper for maybe superstar of the year if he keeps this up. I mean, a lot of he's been under the radar. Man, Victory Green is putting in some work. I'm telling you. Um, I put I did a nice little feud between those guys, and Hebrew Hammer unfortunately lost lost out. He didn't win a single match, and he's just struggling. Uh, it's I agree, it's a little sad to see, but he definitely obviously can uh, recover because. He started out like five and zero, six and zero, including that win against Woody. So uh, he's definitely no slouch himself. So, um, but I wanted to point that out because he was so high on the card. Now he finds himself in the middle of the kickoff show. So that's kind of like a like an eye opening like moment, you know. So I mean, if he gets the wins, he'll move right back up. But you know, it's kind of the thing that needs to be pointed out. Um, also, the other, the last thing I think I wanted to mention on the pre-show as far as I uh, I was looking at um, Green Machine versus JD. That's another uh, two mid card guys that could easily be on the main show, but they're finding themselves down in here in the on the kickoff that are heavy hitters. This could be uh, match of the night here. These guys have done it before and could easily be match of the night here. Yeah, they could. They could. But yeah, um, and the other one, by the way, uh, JD, or sorry, uh, um, Redhead came to me and wanted to, this is the match where she wanted to team with uh, John, or sorry, Scott, but against John and AK, but I was like, that really doesn't make sense because we kind of killed Lee, and I don't think Scott would yeah. team with somebody from the Alliance who killed his partner. So We were leading up to like where I would fight anybody, maybe even team with someone from the other yeah. side, because... But that was that was literally before we lost by a hundred points. Yeah. So and Lee's like, I'm out. 
And I so looked it was at, like, yeah, yeah, no, it does, does not work storyline wise anymore for that at this point. So li- literally, like, if, if, read between the lines. We're gonna do something later. It's gonna happen. You, no one knows when. Oh, yeah. Um, but it's gonna be later because it just doesn't make sense right now. Even though we're both legit uh-huh. crazy people right now, it actually makes more sense than it probably would otherwise. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, it makes no sense because if they're affiliated on that side with UVA, you're all gonna die. You just don't know it yet. Is where I'm coming from. Yeah. So no, nothing's happening. We'll that see. would not make any sense. But um... by the way, um, in the Discord, uh, literally Jut Jut has posted about me saying in the character chat that I better keep my mouth shut or I'm gonna join Lee. So the war is going. Your know. boys are going here. Uh... Oh, I know. Oh, they're going yeah. all right. You better believe that. You better believe yeah, yeah. that. We'll talk about that as we get on this main show here. But um, yeah. So I instead of te- uh, teaming Redhead up with uh, Scott. I decided to give Redhead a partner on the Alliance, which is TB666, who is a strong member of the Alliance, but kind of kind of out in limbo, kind of like he's he's definitely a heel. He's definitely a bad guy. He's mad at the solution since Warden basically slit his partner's throat. Um, so <laughs> obviously he is this is a chance to get a piece back at the Alliance here or at sorry, at the uh, global solution against the solution with John and AK. So that's a little bit of why I team TB666 up with Redhead, because this is Redhead's match that he uh, or that she um, requested here. So this is a request match here that actually made it onto the main show, which doesn't always happen. I definitely do take suggestions all the time, but um, uh, if if they're good enough, they will make the main shows, which is Hell in a Cell here. So as far as the I do, what's up? Oh yeah, you can go on. I was oh no no, no. I, I was gonna say literally that's that's as far as the kickoff show. That's all I got to say. That's all I said. Okay. Well, I was gonna say that I really really like how uh, you know Red and TB six six. They're not your normal team, but I love how since they're in the UVA that they're teaming up for this. I think that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. That's always fun when you see that back in the wrestling stuff. Where it's like, how would this team work together? Well, they're they're allied together, but. He still might think she's batshit, but I mean they got the same goals. But fuck, stay over there. Like that's just that's cool when you get factions when you get them that big. Mm-hmm. That gets interesting. I, I like that angle of it too. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so we'll see where that goes. I all I know is Woody, you better watch out because Redhead is aiming for you and she's trying to go through all your solution people. So, uh, yep. just be ready. Just be ready. That's all I'm gonna say. That's all I'm no, gonna say. I'll she wants her away with she, a ten foot pole. She wants Dude, you. you. You're so. gonna need that. She wants you. Is it you or your title, or is it both? Does it matter? Who I don't knows? even think she cares about the title. I, I think she I, wants you. I don't no. think she has enough wins to go for my title. Oh, oh, no. oh, oh we got some, we got some trash talk coming. There you go. That's fine. <laughs> there you go. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what the main card. You want to go over the main, main card? Main card has Bomber defending against Otis, like we said, for the Road mm-hmm. Warrior title. Mm-hmm. Um, Tom versus GMSG. The I'll just list them and we can jump in as we go. Yeah. Uh, best of five, match three, Finn versus Ash. So bad blood to the next level on this one now. And this could possibly be a sweep though too. If Ash gets the win, be it. it's over. It's three zero. Yeah, I think it will be. You do? You think it's? You think that's going to be yep. it? Three zero, huh? Yep. Okay. okay. Yep. I, I mean, I, I at least want to see Finn get one win. I mean, come on. Finn's got to get a win, right? Come on. I'm hoping so, at least. I kind of hope so. I, I want to see it. I want to see that he got to Ash to the point where he's throwing him off his game, and he's he's won one. I, I like I like that idea. Yeah. I want that. Because Ash that. has been shit on so much in his JRPL career as far as, like, the whole broken nerd thing that happened earlier on this year where – he was like the the first victim, and he was the one out for Broken Nerd. And then they ended up finally fighting at WrestleMania, and Broken Nerd I think ended up winning. And then he finally joined a team with Finn, and then Finn turned on him. Man, Ash has got the he's got the butt end of everything in the JRPL, so he needs he does need the win. I feel like he needs to get this win, but I want to see it extended a little bit, not just not a, not a sweep, not a sweep. But uh, anyway, um, Woody, I'll just say that Redhead said in chat, uh, in the Twitch chat on my channel, it's Cyclops Scott on Twitch.tv. Um, doesn't care about the title. There you go. There you this go. This one's you. This one's you. And okay, so next yeah. up, we have the Chaotic Maniacs. I'm unfamiliar with them having that team name. Yep. Broken Nerd and Baron Ash. 
after. I don't recognize that name. That's cool. I like it. Yep. They hit me up uh, on Twitter, and they said we want to make our – because they're a team, obviously, and they said they want to make their team name the Chaotic yeah. Maniacs. Also, their picks are great. It's Omega and Skrull, both with the dark sunglasses. It, is, it looks great there. Also, mm-hmm. they spelled Chaotic K-A-O-T-I-K, and Maniacs has a K as well. So, you know, yep. they're cool. It's like, uh-huh. Um, but you know who they're facing? They're facing the UBC, Judd Judd and Bastion, in a death match. Oh, the hey, fuck are your boys doing, hey, Bomber? What are you way, doing? I just have a question well, for you. What happened the last time UBC was in a death match? Do you happen to know that? What are you doing? You happen Why are you, to know that? What are you doing? Yeah, no, I know what happened. I saw it. Okay. I saw it go off the roof, you ass. So here's the thing. Um, this what is, are you doing to these guys? This is what I wanted to explain as far as the storyline of why a lot of people would say that UVC probably should be the number one contenders. But um, as far as they're what happened. The, they're division killers. And, and yeah, uh, uh, after what happened with Lee and Scott, um, I think I think a very cool storyline would be if they go on this crazy deathmatch uh, tag team uh, tear as far as, I mean, who knows? They could lose this match, and it would all be foiled, you know. But I'm thinking, hey, how about this? Another deathmatch. Even uh, Jut Jut got in the chat, in the uh, our UV, little UVC chat we have, and he said, wait, what? Another deathmatch? Holy shit. And I was like, yep. Good luck, boys. Let's see what we got. I, I don't like know. Storyline-wise, I, like I love it. If they kill all the teams, they have to be the number one contenders. What you saying, I find man? it interesting how many stipulation matches are in a row. Well, oh, that's hell in a cell. I mean, come on. Oh, that's true, <laughs> it, yeah. it is. Yeah. Well, I mean, you got to talk matches in a row. Next up is the ultra-violent title. Peanut is my bitch defending against Bomber in yep. a death match. Yep. Technically, Bomber might not have the Road Warrior title at this point or becomes a double champion. That is true. Or doesn't um... win this one. It's possible, too. Has anyone held two titles at the same time yet? No. No. Ah. And God damn it, if you're the first one, know, I'll be so angry. I know, trust me, I know. <laughs> Again, none of this was planned. Obviously, I won Tournament of Death, so the reward is to get the Ultraviolet title match. That's This is obviously that the reward here against Peanut is my bitch, and the Road Warrior title is defended every show. So, unfortunately, I'm stuck in two matches. I don't... I honestly do not like putting people in two matches but this is that damn scenario and it happened to be me and i don't i i honestly i 100 percent honestly don't like it but it has to be done and i kind of want to get rid of one of these or i kind of want to get rid of this road warrior title but <laughs> i'm also not you, gonna take a dive so you gotta fucking beat me for it by the well, way since well since you have two matches is there gonna be some kind of point uh, yeah, there was talk about that, about, you know, if you're in two matches, lose certain points on a second match. Um, I even offered that when I said I want the Warden match. I mean, I'll take both matches if a penalty doesn't matter. Like, I, I even threw that out there when I was wanting to do the Warden thing, too. Yeah. Um, so, but what are, like, do you have plans for that? Do you actually know what you're going to do for that yet? I... Obviously, kayfabe wise, I would I would write it up like that. But I I no rules have been put in place for that. Obviously, because I would never really intended on this happening. I would probably say I know it's me, and I don't want people to say shit. But I don't think that is going to be the case because as far as when people win like the battle royal, there's no um, there's no fatigue or like that's how I would describe it. Like fatigue. That's fair. Yeah, like yeah. a fatigue carryover um, for the as far as the Royal Rumble as well. Um, it it definitely would kind of make sense, but it ha- it hasn't been written, it hasn't been put in stone. So I feel like we probably won't do that. But kayfabe wise, it will be written up that way for anybody else that happens to come across this. Um, yeah, so that's that's basically how we're going to probably approach that. Is there's there's not going to be any point. Uh, subtractions against anybody if you're in multiple matches, but kayfabe wise, it will be written up that way. So. Okay. Next up, we have the submission match: the Demon Cross versus Cam Popplestone. Yeah, that is a cool match. I, that's all I'm saying. That's a very cool match. So I don't have anything else to say about that except like I'm just like, yes, I want to watch. Yes, yeah, I'm. I want to see that. 
that play out. That'll be good. Constantly trying to create new things here, and I this is just something. I know Cam, I want to get him something good because he has he's done good things with that Road Warrior title. So I wanted to get him a good high-profile match here with a story behind it. And Cross has been doing really good stuff too. So this is a good, this is a good like story match, like kayfabe match is what mm-hmm. this is. A lot can happen like, in this, yeah. Isn't this like an unofficial uh, number one contendership match? Yes, this is basically a number one contender match. Uh, for what did I say? It's been so long. Like the UV title, right? Is that what I said? I think so. Yeah, I think it's it's unofficial. It's not obviously. I don't have it written on there, but the winner of this basically is going to be getting a UV title match coming up. So just be looking out for that. I know these guys both earned a shot at another title, and the UVC title looks like it's right up their alley. These guys have both been doing really good work. So um, winner of this, and it's a submission match. So if you guys are listening to this. Uh, make sure you read the rules if you haven't already because a submission match can bite you in the butt if you don't read the rules. Yeah, what are you going to know about the submission matches? Yeah, if people have yeah. got bit in the butt before because they didn't mm-hmm. read the rules. Uh, speaking of Woody, his solution teammates, Warden and Bear Me, are defending the tag titles against Daddy Kink, that guy Jack and Kev Kev. That's right, baby. My boys! Uh, but no, uh, the reason behind this, cause I know everybody's like, wait a minute, the fucking daddy can't, cause this was a joke a little while back. Um, first of all, the tag team division is thin. We all know the tag team, tag team division is thin. Uh, daddy can got a big win at SummerSlam, which is kind of a big deal. They haven't been that bad. I know they aren't, they don't show up to every show as far as, you know, NXT house shows, those kind of things, but they do show up to every WWE show. They've been showing up to every show since last December, I think. So they're almost on a full year being on every show. And they've been doing nothing but tagging. They've been teaming up the whole time. They've been do- they've been having some success. Sometimes they falter. That's cool. But they got a big win at SummerSlam. This match hasn't happened yet. A lot Solutions fought almost everybody. I mean, you got to oh, yeah. admit that. So I wanted a fresh match. I wanted a match against a team that is fresh off a win. And who knows? A big we, win. We, it was a good win. And we could see oh. a, guys, could this be upset of the year just like last year where uh, where the Outsiders beat the Solution? It could happen. Yep. I'm just saying. That was, that was literally top seed and bottom seed, and we yep. won. So that's kind of what's going on here. Don't, um, don't sleep on my boys. I kind of don't see it. Kind of just because of. I think we have a pretty good understanding of the Hell in the Cell card right now. Uh huh. But if it was any other, maybe. But Hell in the Cell seems pretty cut and dry. As far wait, what do you like the the WWE for, show or what yeah, yeah. For the predictions? And yet, I think because you got Super Showdown and Evolution right afterwards, where a lot of things can just like maybe happen oh, there. Oh, you're instead. saying like you don't see the solution like having a chance to lose is what you're saying. He sees yeah. they've got a pretty. They've got this. They thinks they have this card locked down as far as oh. their prediction. Well, I think it's the opposite. I think it's a wide open one with the two upcoming, like the Australia show and the women's show. Oh, things are wild. It's different. It's it's any other time it'd be fine, but this is when the greatest rumble happened I, with backlash. Yeah. Right, Armor, you were saying it's like who knows with this. This is weird. Yeah, and so who knows? It's, it Ward, could be time is right. Ward is ready. Right. Warden's ready to take that dive, baby. Warden's ready to take that dive. <laughs> Warden wants that solo run. Talking, you're talking about that earlier. He's going to finger poke of doom it. Yeah. Uh, well, and Jonathan C.T. Martin in the chat saying, I'm calling it now. Daddy Kink will be your new tag team champions. I'm not going to lie. I talked to those guys today. They are hyped. They. I'm not even kidding. They were talking about today at work. They were like, yeah, you know, we, we're gonna, <laughs> we got to talk about this. And this it's so fun <laughs> to see because, like, uh, they're both awesome. not. They're both not real big wrestling fans. They watch the mainstream stuff. They go with me to the uh, local shows, but they aren't really big wrestling fans. That's why the dude that picked Goldberg, that guy Jack, he hasn't watched wrestling since Goldberg was in WCW. I'm saying he came back to wrestling when Goldberg came back. That's when he started watching wrestling again. Oh, I'm 100 percent honest. So, uh, and it's fun to see them getting really excited. Like at work and, about this stuff, so that's really fun. And that's kind that's of everything you wanted about this. You wanted people to get that extra enjoyment out of yeah. the wrestling that you watch and talk about. So the fact that they're legitimately, as a tag team, 
yep. getting excited and plotting it like this could be our shot. This could be it. Like that's yep. so cool to me. And, and again, awesome. they're facing that. like the. It's safe to say, like th- so far at this point, it's the, an great, battle. the greatest tag team that the JRPL has ever seen. It's easy to say yep. that at this point in time. Uh, so uh, they're probably going to get the number two team. I will agree with that. <laughs> they're probably going to get fucking squashed. So, but either way, you never know. You never know. Bummer if you write that properly, where it's moments where it was like Santini almost beat Daniel Bryan for the world title. It's like, oh my god, they almost got it. Holy, like I'll, moments I'll like that are if, so great. If they win, the write up's going to be. No, but cr- even if they crazy. don't, there should be a moment where it's like, yeah. oh, God, like that. I thought they won. Like that little, those kind of moments are really, really good. So, yeah. or we just watch them. Think about, you know. Yeah. You also got to think about the uh, the tag team money in the bank briefcase. Oh, <laughs> that's right. You just, you just want if they, your boys to be cashed in on, don't you? That's what no, you No, I'm just saying, you imagine just if Daddy King get the upset. Imagine if Daddy King get the upset win and then no chance oh, just no. takes it from him. So, oh, oh, that's that oh, would be, that's so cruel. That would be the ultimate heel move oh. in the history of heel moves. That, that would I, be but, bad. Uh, I could see it. <laughs> be, oh my god, that would be sad. Have someone else do the dirty work, and it's these guys who just had to fight and claw and get it on a a chance that was thrown their way, and oh my god, they won their top of the world, and oh no, they're cashed in on heartbreak. Yeah. But the thing oh. is, the winner of this, as if you go down, the winner of this will at some point be facing either CM Carlito and Super Hippo or yes. Twin Mazement, uh, Mr. Ah. Heel, Mr. Heel Allen and uh, El Santos. So New blood. Do you know, the, yeah. do you yep. know if that will be at the Super Show or? Uh, not sure yet. Not sh- not Rebels. sure yet on when it will be. Yeah, you didn't say. But, but yeah, it, they will be the new the next title match, though. I do know that. I'm not sure on the date yet, though. What show? So, next up is a non-title match. Victory Green and Moss. Well, let's talk about that for a second real quick. Uh, originally, this match was booked as a title match. Um, there was major backlash on Discord when this was announced. Um, people got mad that Mod Step was getting a title match. Um, again, I saw it. I thought it made sense. Mod Step returned. He's won every. He has not lost a single. Ma- He's like four or five and zero oh since he returned. But yet, and left were mad. high up too. He said, "Right, don't forget when he, when he left, he was high." Oh, up when there. he left, he was a main eventer. He fought That's for the, he fought too, against yeah. the world title. He fought for the world title. He did lose, yep. but he fought. He was fighting for the world title. But um, again, this is basically if Mod Step wins this non-title match. He's get he he will be fighting Green Machine for the uh, the top lock title. So I know part of part of the upsetness was because he didn't go to take over as yes. well. And like, I agree. Uh, I do that's agree. Fair. I, I that, agree. That's a, that's a bit fair. I, I get that. So yeah, but that's, that's the, interesting match too because I mean, yep. Uh, when it's not title, it's like oh I can take a little relax. But no, if he wins, clearly that's the next one's for the title. It's one of those situations. Uh-huh. Exactly. And I do agree. That is why I backed off on it because I, I, he did no show at uh takeover Brooklyn. So I, I dropped him out. I dropped the title match off. And now if he does win, he will get the title match probably at the next show. It'll probably be like, it'll probably be evolution. Uh, so, um, or so that would be super, actually super showdown. So showdown is next. I think yeah. you said, right. And then again, who knows? He might that might be a weird show, so he might not. I don't know. We'll see. But if he does win, he will be the number one contender. If Victory Green wins, we'll figure something else out. We'll find a new number yeah. one contender. So speaking of non-title matches with contendership on the line, yeah. Next up is Woody, not defending the world title, against former champion legit boss, and Nate Myers. Yeah, baby. If Woody loses. He will defend his world title against whoever won the match at Super Showdown. Yep. Uh, I, I just Woody, by the way, uh, as far as the way this match came to be, it just popped up in my head. I wanted to – obviously, I thought, like, handicap match, but we don't have a style for a handicap match yet. There's been discussion, but we don't have one. And I thought the next best thing is you facing Legit Boss and Nate Myers in a triple threat and then I just the the stipulation just popped in my head. If they win, the winner, no matter who it is, faces you. So first of all, so, I want to hear your thoughts on this. That's what I want to hear. What are your? I just want to throw on one this? last bit. Oh. Woody doesn't even need to be the loser to have correct. Like, what, like boss could beat Nathan or Nate Myers. Yep. 
and Boss gets the title shot against Woody. Exactly. Like, huh? uh-huh. Didn't even beat Woody during the title shot against Woody. Uh-huh. Oh my God! That's, yeah, yeah. What are your thoughts on well, this bad boy? Okay, I like I like the match. I like the stipulation. But goddamn, it seems that every time I get a title, it's like I have to defend it at one of these wonky shows like Super Showdown or Evolution. Uh-huh. You're the world I, champ. I you yeah, you're the world champ, baby. Come on now. I, I, I know, but you, you get what I'm saying. You get well, what I'm hey, saying. Hey, look at this. All you got to do is win. You don't have to worry about I it. I don't know. I've never had a title match like that. I couldn't tell you. I think he's never had a title to begin with, so oh, he's not tag titles. Okay. He's not the tag titles. Yeah, I was about to say, he was a tag, tag team champion. Um, tag champ, one, one match. But I will say, <laughs> like, obviously, if you if you win, you will not defend your title at Super Showdown, which it's like, whoa, wait a minute now. Hold on. When is he going to defend his title? It would end up being at oh. Evolution against a different opponent. So, Yeah. And, and that, like kind that of would lead hope. to the main event when we get there. But yeah. keep going. Keep going, though. Keep going about this one. I kind of hope I do win because I have an idea of the Super Showdown If depending on what things go where. Mm-hmm. But, uh, this should be interesting. Like, I hope I win. I mean, because, like, obviously, Legit Boss would have beat you at the last show. So let's point that out first of all. If it wasn't for the cash in, obviously, you did technically win with the cash in. Nate Myers is kind of the wild card in this, though. I mean, he's ha- he's done he's had a lot of success. Definitely as a tag team. And he won at uh, SummerSlam. He beat X I V I L I. So. Um, he's kind of the wild card in this match. Who knows? What if it would be Woody versus Nate Myers at Super Showdown? Like a match that nobody would have expected. See, that's the fun thing with this match. There's no telling what could come from it. Yeah, I won't be mad if either of them win. I mean, I would, you know, to be honest, I wouldn't even be mad if, like, let's say there was a tie. Like, I would expect then it would be like a triple threat match or something at the Super Showdown. Oh God! I've, I obviously have not thought of that. Uh, try not to plant those seeds in anybody's head. Um, you know me and the uh, the no contests. I don't plan these things out. Um, but who knows? I mean, maybe it would. There's that's also a possibility. Yeah, I think I think Woody versus Nate Meyer for the title. It's something you don't think you'd normally see, but if that would happen, it'd be like, oh, well, that's that's cool. Yeah, it's a fun like. I do enjoy the freshness of like seeing matches that haven't happened yet and seeing people that like if he wins this match, I mean he obviously he beat the world champion, he beat the former world champion. I mean the dude deserves he deserves a world title match. So mm-hmm. I mean it would be it would be fun, I think. So I don't know. And then again, who knows? Legit boss might just win and then she might win back her title. I mean, then the title comes back to the UVA. So you never know. Yeah. And then I make my claim. Either way, that is that's the whole story behind this. Is that's that's awesome when you get that level of things yeah. with just one match. All is all it takes. It's it's Woody having having to uh, put his title on the like semi title on the line against two UVA members, and anything can happen here. So it's basically it's still basically a two on one match. And trust me, it's it going to be written up as a two on one match as well. So. Um, we'll see what you hmm. do though to see how the outcome shapes out. If only, if only had someone that could help save you. Oh, shame. Mm. Anyway, should have the main it. event should have made Alex. Oh, what? Oh, I'm not. I'm not Woody's friend. Um, Hell in a Cell match. I'm not Woody's friend. <laughs> Hell yep. in a Cell match. Yeah. Winner gets a JRPL World Title match at Evolution. Oh, yep. well, look at that. Bionic yeah. Knee versus Hero Shin Moses. I'm just gonna stay right off the bat, Bomber, because you're talking about it. This is the main event, and I love that these guys get the. That's awesome. I will say this is still I, – I can't take all the credit on this because this was the feud that uh, that they kind of developed. Woody kind of adopted it when he took over as the GM, and I'm kind of just bringing it to the climax because this, this isn't anything that I, like, planned out. This is – obviously, I put it as the main event here, and I think as far as – because I wanted one match to be in a Hell in a Cell match at this show, obviously. And when I thought of storyline wise, who on, who on the entire card should be in a hell in a cell match. And these two guys, Japanese, they broke up the, the way the story, the way the kayfabe storylines and the write-ups have panned out. Like one guy got the advantage over the other. And then the other one kind of 
turned on the other. Like one Hilo kind of even turned heel a little bit in some of the write-ups. Not straight heel, but like he was doing heelish things, being a little more dirty. Like these guys really are all out doing everything they can to one up the other. So I think these guys definitely, as far as storylines go, have one of the richest storylines we have going right now. And I think they earned the main event here. And again, this was kind of developed. They wanted to break up. Woody kind of took it over and he made some stuff happen when he was GM. And I'm just bringing, this is their climax. This is the feud coming to a head here at Hell in a Cell. So, um, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't this the rubber match between the two? Like, I think they've only had two other matches prior to this. I will. I know they fought each other before. I am on the page right now. I will tell you. I know they fought in a hell in a triple, in a triple threat or fatal four way. Yes, they fought in the. You put them against each other in tournament of death in the first round, I believe mm-hmm. it was. Okay, here we go. I am looking at it right now. They fought each other one on one at Takeover Chicago. Bionic knee one, 25 to 24, one point. Okay. Um, they also fought each other at Extreme Rules in a four way match, which was Tournament of Death. Hito Shin Moses won and advanced in Tournament of Death. So, yes, they fought each other twice since they broke up. Because they actually beat Finn Ash, or Finnish, or however you want to say it, in their final match together. And then they turned at the uh-huh. end of that tag match. And they fought each other immediately after that. Bionic Knee won. They fought each other again at Extreme Rules in the Tournament of Death. Hiroshin Moses won. So, yes, this is their rubber match here at Hell in a Cell. And it's inside Hell in a Cell with a world title on the line for the winner. So... Yeah, as far as storylines go, so that's, right. that's so Champa Gargano, right? Yeah. Like it's just oh, it's, it's just getting so crazy. It's elevating, and the world title is going to get. In. Yeah, that, and, I, I love that. That's and and I it's did like see Jericho way back when too. And I did see Hito come on to Discord and say, "I don't know why we're getting this opportunity and stuff," but I'm like, "You guys, your story has been so good. Like this is obviously, mm. like you guys have been." propelled up to this like you guys have got this main event like this is your guys main event so don't be like discrediting yourself because i saw Mm -hmm. him kind of being down on himself like i don't know why i'm getting this opportunity this i shouldn't be there and stuff so no this is this is a big story that's been going on this is coming to the climax and this is the end all be all of the japanese uh tag team Mm -hmm. um so we'll see i I like that I like that no matter who wins, like, mm-hmm. let's say if I do defend my title against either Boss or Nate Myers, yep. that no matter what, I'm either facing a UVA member or I'm going to be facing a Global Solution member. That's the other thing. You're right. Yeah. One is UVA. The other one's Global Solution. So that's here's another the other big thing. thing there. Yeah. If you lose your title to Boss or Nathan, they're defending against yep. the winner of that Hell of a Cell. So either way, it could be very, it's going to get very interesting coming up here. So, um, mm. yeah, this to me, this is like I, I don't know. I think it's like the perfect main event. I think this should be like yep. a big. This is a big main event here. And that is for Sunday, uh, September sixteenth. Yep. And what is it? Yep. One week later, or two weeks is twenty eighth. Is Death Before Dishonor, Ring of Honor show? Yeah, two weeks. And yeah. You did fill out a bit of this, so we'll go through this one quickly as well. Yeah, we can go through uh, it pretty quick here. Fart bucket. It's Ash's turn. Ash's Ash turn, baby. Bucket. Ash, come on up. Out. Come on down, Ash. <laughs> uh, bucket and five versus Sling Blade. Tom versus Wookie. That's the kickoff so far. Mm-hmm. Um, and is the main card locked in, Bomber? Or like main things card, can happen, right? Main but, card's locked in. Yeah. Uh, obviously, the main event okay. is depending on who wins between Bomber and Otis. Right. But yeah. right. Okay. But yeah. The rest of so it we'll, is locked in. So we'll work in. our way up. We have yep. Green Machine versus Lily Pilly in a hardcore match. Yep. Uh, Cade Gailey versus Nathan 8K. Mm-hmm. Kyoko versus Bionic Knee. That could be a rough one for Kyoko, honestly. Yeah. I, the Knee. thing is, the only reason I did this is Kyoko has been doing good on house shows, which is what I was kind of pointing out earlier. Um, obviously, she has no idea anything that's going on, so I don't know how she's winning, but she's doing good. Well, yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Um, Hero versus Banksy. So this is Banksy like wanting proper everything and literally 
he could be going against the number one contender at this point, or mm-hmm. the person who lost to the number one contender. So that, that's a big one for him that's there. Right. Uh, Tino versus Vitamin Yes. CM Carlito and Super Hippo versus the Chaotic Maniacs, Broken Nerd. And, and this Baron is X. actually a rematch. These guys fought each other at, I believe it was TakeOver Brooklyn. Let me see super quick. I believe this is a rematch between those two teams. It is, yes. Uh, broke, the Chaotic Maniacs won the first match between the two. So mm-hmm. this is a rematch. We'll see what happens here on the house show. So yep. We have a six-man tag. I say yep. man, but you know what I mean. Uh, tag champions Warden and Bear Me, as well as AK for the solution against the Blissful Enigmas, Redhead, Jonathan C.T. Martin, and Junction. Yep, this was all Jonathan C.T. Martin sent me the request. It said they wanted to face off against the solution. Uh, Warden, Beer Me, and AK, and I literally, no joke, I said, are you sure you want to do that? You guys have been struggling lately. You're going against, trying to go against some of the hardest people ever to beat. And he said, yep, we want it. I said, okay, well, you got I, it. I, I love that. I, <laughs> so I love I was that. Like, I appreciate that. That's you good. You got yeah. it. I said, you got it. You see, and now this thinking... immediately. <clears throat> go ahead. Oh. Oh, I was saying, like, that six-man tag, I was thinking of something similar, but, like, not for that show. And that kind of, like, throws all those plans down the water. What, what do you what mean? I what like what about plans this... do you have? Well, yeah, what were you thinking? Well, I mean, if oh, you can save, was... it later, save it for later, you know. Yeah, no, like, I don't think it's going to happen now because it's just going to rehash, like, that match but replacing AK. But, like I said, I think I've made this clear before that the solution wanted a six-man tag at, uh... Bound for Glory, I think, it's the next DNA show. Mm-hmm, it is. Mm-hmm. And then we, we thought about the Enigmas facing them, but uh, it'll probably be someone else now. So we'll see, see where that goes. Okay. I do like the fact that this is going to be Warden and Red against each other for the first time since she licked his blood off his forehead. That's true, too. Uh-huh. That's, that's, there's going to be doings afoot with that one. And the, and the Solution, uh, they're the ones who uh, took Adonex out of commission. They, yes, yes, they are. And John's not in the match. Hmm, happens, happens to see that uh-huh. happen, yeah. Because John <laughs> is the one that actually did the deed. But mm-hmm. yeah. Uh-huh. See, we're just protecting John, okay? Mm-hmm. And I'm afraid, I don't know if John's going to show up, so as you can tell, I didn't book John, because I don't know. Uh-huh. So, uh, uh, Redhead in the chat says, mmm, blood. Oh, <laughs> well, there you go. So, yeah. Uh, next up, we have the death match that Woody wanted. Legit Boss versus me versus Woody. So what do you? Well, we can go to what yep. you were talking about with the character stuff here. This is, all this is a, here. like for me. This is a. I'll, I'll say right out, out, out here. This is a big fucking match because it's literally the SummerSlam main event plus me. Yeah. I already had that same anniversary where it was the WrestleMania main event with you two guys plus me. So I'm I'm getting big opportunities here. Not gonna lie. Um, it's also against literally the current world champ and the one who he took it from and who could be number one contender at this point, for crying out loud. Uh, this is nuts for me, and it's a death match. Fuck. And it's yeah. Ring of Honor. So, well, yeah. Fuck! Woody, what's your... Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, Woody, what, are you, what were you thinking behind this? What were, you, what, were you, uh, what were you going for here? Okay, so, like, like what I sent you with the, the balloons coming down after their match, like, with some with the Canadian Championship, one with the, the World Championship... I was like, well, I've taken things from both of these guys. You know, I still have beef with Boss. And I still have beef with Scott since I have his Canadian championship. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, you know, we can do we can do something where it's not just, me, you know, putting Scott in there with me and Boss. Like, I wanted, a, I wanted a story to where it all makes sense that we're all fighting. And I was like, well, Death Before Dishonor is coming up, and that seems like a really good match, just a triple threat match with everyone. So now, I'll say, to, to, I'll just say real quick here, Bomber, to me, this seems like this is early for, for me in this match with, with the comeback and stuff. I, this will, is... I will say this. I will say when Woody sent me the reply, or the request, I should say, um, I, I immediately thought, this is a little much for a house show. I thought this is almost like a possible even main event for a main show. But we are running out of show. I will say this. We are running out of shows before our big climax, climax for the, uh, the Survivor Series. So I 
don't know where we would be able to fit this in but before that. So I'm I let it slide. I let it go through. Because also, Woody, by the way, you sent me the request and you immediately posted in the actual uh, request, the character chat all the layout of this thing. So it's kind of also put me in a corner where if I didn't book the match, that would kind of be weird. So, um, first of all, yeah, I didn't, I didn't mean, to, mm. I didn't mean to do that, this but mm -hmm. I was like, I saw, I saw like the the one stuff wasn't posted. So I'm like, well, I'll just, I'll just post okay. the character. Here it is. Yep, there it is. There it is. I, I knew you were a little mad, and I understand. It's okay. I was no, I wasn't mad. I was just like, well, I'll just post, mm -hmm. post it there. It's fine. No. Um, but the only reason I think I'm, I mean, I did let the match slide is because first of all, Scott has been getting beat up so much lately. I feel like this is going to be a really hard match for him because Woody, yes, you are very hard to beat. We talk shit all the time. You are very hard to beat. And Legit Boss has been struggling a lot lately, too. He's been getting a lot of losses. I don't like putting people in situations where they're going to keep getting loss after loss after loss after loss. I try to get them to face an opponent at least equal to them. And right now, right now, as of this moment, I will say, Woody, that you are a little bit, uh, a little bit higher up on the totem pole than these guys. No offense, Scott, by the way. No, I... But, I mean, no, you have um, been you have been slumping big time. Legit I won boss, one out of ten. I know, <laughs> so, I know. Yeah. Legit boss has been slumping Just. big time. Um, uh. But storyline, storyline wise, it does make sense. Um, but yeah, so I'm gonna let it slide, and it is gonna get crazy. Storyline wise, storyline wise, he's putting us over. Like if you want to put it like that, there's no reason that the world champion should be calling us out for this match. True. Yes. But, uh, but it's like, but there's part of his redemption. He, there's like unfinished business with the two. But yep. our characters are like, the fuck is going on? Like, so yeah, for me, like, I mean, the fart bucket thing is going to be whatever it is. And then this match, like, yep. I literally, legit, this was number one. And now here I am again against her. Okay. Well, what, I, want a, I want a new target, is like the attitude here. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's you? Okay. Like, let's do this now, is what you've just done. So. Yeah. This is going to get interesting. Either way, but it's, it's a goddamn death match the Ring of Honor. Fuck. I know. Death the That's death not good match for me. That's real bad. <laughs> the death match stipulation. Oh, man. You're killing you me. You saw what buddy. happened last time I was in a death match. Somebody died. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're putting me in one? Woody. Woody. We'll see Woody what happens. Doing? We'll see what happens. Remember, I want to make I want to make my claim for a world title. I just beat the former champ. What if I beat the number one contender former champ or the current champ? Oh, I'm yeah. making a case. Like you, you're you're giving I, me a leapfrog ability here. Like people I are going to take throughout notes. this throughout this whole card. I think that's the one with the most story to it. Uh, Storyline. Uh, yeah. I mean, there has uh, there's been a decent <laughs> amount with solution and blissful enigmas. But I think storyline wise, I mean, I, I can, I can, yeah, definitely agree with that. Yeah, potential anyway. Like, because yeah. Woody knows that I'm going to go all out, and Boss is going to go all out, and he's going to go all out. So we're going to go nuts with this. It's going to be yeah. fun. Uh -huh. It's going to be good. Yeah. And yeah. this can definitely lead to like main show stuff, like summer, like Survivor Series and whatnot, or other shows beyond this. So. Oh, you better believe I'm going to have stuff like that. <laughs> Motherfucker, I got Survivor Series. I got Survivor Series planned out. So. You got. Oh, you you got give us those plans right work. now, then. You got I mean, plans I have the plan. I have the plans. I actually don't know when to reveal the plans. Like honestly, I have oh, God, every. We... I've had everything planned out for Dude, like months now. But for the record, there is literally Hell in a Cell, Death Before Dishonor, Evolution, Super Showdown, Bound for Glory, and Takeover before Survivor Series. That's There's true. like eight shows. So not yet. Not yet. This I'm time. thinking. By the way, Evolution is going to be a big show for us. I don't know how big it's going to be for the WWE. Obviously, they got a lot of weird matches going. It's going to be history making. Yeah, it's going to be. But Apparently, I think tickets aren't selling well. Yeah, oh, but really? I think that oh. I think for us, I think that is going to be the big show where storyline where like it's everything is like head. revealed i think like obviously okay. stuff's been building up but i think that is when things are going to be revealed i think at evolution and i'm cool with that so i think that's what we're gonna i think that's what we're leading leading towards there i think okay. evolution is where there's going to be the big survivor series reveal so and 
I think some people can probably predict some things that are going to happen, but there's going to be some stipulations that are that I have planned that nobody's gonna uh, that nobody think is going to happen. So nice. There are going to be like some it. things. Uh, yeah, there's going to be some uh, fun stuff. I will say that. So yeah, yeah, Woody, screw you on this match. <laughs> Nothing personal. Yeah. It's just business. It's I just think... a match. Don't tap. It's it's going to go down that road. You realize. To like, be honest, like if it was WWE show, I'd be more confident. But with you know ROH and end up being a death match, I dude, think we're all you like, got, you, even playing. You, you know what the worst part of this is? Is there's goddamn like five man tag main event in this Ring of Honor show, and then like I don't know what the fuck is going to go on. Juju Liger's on this. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's true. going to be a cool show, but what the fuck is going on? I don't know. And yeah. I'm gonna lose points for wrong ones? What are you doing? Double point, double points for wrong. Oh god! Death match. Oh, I don't want a negative hundred. Uh, I can't. I, oh. But I will say, you got your boy, Beer Me Jesus. He's a pretty big. Uh, I think he's. I may be wrong, but I feel like he's the solution uh, Ring of Honor guy for your team. I may be wrong on that. He is. But yeah, I feel he like is. he's your. <laughs> yeah. There he's you your go. Ring of Honor uh, ringer over there. He's your. He's your insider Ring, guy. Your ringer of honor. There yeah, you go. your ringer I mean, of I honor. I watch it too. But not as religiously. Yeah, I feel like he's uh, he's the big. I follow everything, but and he's just going to tell you, uh, punishment. Martinez is going to win everything. That's pr- pretty sure that's <laughs> what he's going to tell you. But um. Uh, okay, yeah, we, so got we got a ladder next? match. Two more. We matches. got a ladder match. Number one contender match for the JRPL Road Warrior title at the next Ring of Honor house show, which I believe was final battle in December. Final battle uh, in December. That is a long ways out, but keep that in mind. Yep. So we have Spring Tigress versus Captain Charisma versus Bastion versus JD. This is yep. big. This I, is a big one. And yep. it's a ladder match. I know those can be tough. So. You know what? I picked ladder match because we really haven't had too many ladder matches lately, and I mm. I really want to get back to some ladder matches. We really haven't had too many in a while. Uh-huh. And not really since Money in the Bank, obviously. I, yeah. Well, yeah, Money in the Bank. And before that, I don't even know. Might have been a tag match somewhere. But... Yeah. So Actually, you might Spring Tigress, that, but... that's a big step for her to, to possibly take uh, a shot for the World Warrior title. That's awesome. That's cool. Well deserved. Captain Charisma. Well, we saw what he just did. He's on a good run here. Bastion, Bastion the bastard. Fuck Bastion, but he deserves it yeah. outright. If... And JD also deserves it. So this is this is a good like like a intercontinental Seth Rollins. No pun intended there, Bastion. But it's a cool stepping stone match for everybody who really deserves that chance at. It. I think. Oh yeah. If you look at the, my reasoning behind this was, um, I went straight with people who are, who do good on ring of honor shows. That's why the stipulation is also, they get the match at the next ring of honor show spring tigress. She's, I, I count the all in show as a ring of honor show as well. We, we count that as yeah. that it basically was. So she's four and one on ring of honor shows. Uh, captain Christmas five and one on ring of honor shows. JD, I, did he win at Ring of He won at Ring of Honor, didn't he? Yeah, he's five and zero oh at Ring of Honor yeah. shows. And I'm my, like one and five. I'm yeah, not good. And at my Ring boy of Bastion's of four and <laughs> two at Ring of Honor shows. So all these guys yeah. are very, very good at Ring of Honor shows. And I thought, why not bring back a ladder match with four, as I like to call them, heavy hitters coming in here? They're all really good at Ring of Honor, and see who can climb the ladder, pull down the contract to get a match at Final Battle, which is Ring of Honor's, like, WrestleMania. That's, like, their big mm. show. Final Battle is Ring of Honor's and big show. So that's after Survivor Series. It is after. It's in December. Yeah, it's at the end of the year. So Who will survive? <laughs> yeah, and don't worry. Like, the Road Warrior title will change, probably change hands before December because it's on every oh. show. There's so, 10 shows between then and now, statistically speaking. Yeah, yeah. so there's speaking of, a lot that can that's... change. That's the main event. We'll just talk about that one all in with this, too. Yep. Uh, GMSG is challenging whoever the champion is at that point. Could be you. Maybe. Who knows? Could be. Um, yeah, I hope so, anyway. <laughs> yeah. But there you go. So that's that. The, that's that. So the, odd, the odds of either champion or GMSG still having the title at uh, Final Battle to face the challenger that same night here, mm-hmm. um, they'd have to go on a cam streak of like 10 defenses and yeah. that's unheard of at this point. So yeah, I don't think we're going to, that's, that. that's what it'll take. Yeah. I so, don't think we're going to reach that again. That was kind of, no, a... to put it in perspective, that's what it will have to be. So it was a great. Feat. Uh-huh. Um, but first of all, uh, GMSG five and two at ring of honor shows. 
Um, very high in the points. He's got, I didn't add in the all in points yet, but before that he was sitting at 159, which is in the top, you know, in the top rankings as far as uh, ring of honor points go. And he just beat Tino at all in, which is a ring of honor. Like that counts as ring of honor. So that's big, big in itself. And then again, he's just been, he's been a, a upper to main card, uh main event guy. So this is his opportunity. This is his opportunity. Let's see if he can do it or let's see if he can not do it. Well, I mean, that's pretty much as simple as that. This is his shot. We'll see what he can do. Uh-huh. Uh, it could be, it's either going to be me, which he's already beat. This was, that was at a, uh, we already don't know what that was at. That was at the greatest Royal Rumble because of that damn Royal Rumble bonus question. Um, or it could be Otis, which is, I mean, that's a complete wild card in itself. So it's either going to be Otis versus GMSG, which who would have thought that would have been a main event? That's just crazy in itself. Or it could be a rematch between Bomber and GMSG. So that's what we'll be looking at for the main event for Death Before Dishonor for the Road Warrior Championship. And it's a straight-up singles match. No no stips, just a straight-up match for the title. So... I think it's I think it's a pretty good match in a uh, challenger that is due for a singles title match. What do you guys think? Yeah, I think so. I think GMSG has earned that spot definitely mm-hmm. uh, above everything. Um, uh, who knows if it's going to go through? But like you said, some of these guys have only have one loss. At Ring of Honor. Well, if that's all it takes, that's cool. But Road Warrior means your cha- champion defenses at yep. every. Um uh-huh. and. I always put this in perspective, but I've literally been on every show and I've never had a shot at it. So it's not easy to get a shot at this title, I can say from experience, too. Um, you can ask Gordon about that. Yeah, well, no, but, I mean, depending on different storylines, <laughs> like I've been tagging titles for most of my stuff, for my Canadian title. It's different stuff. Um, so, yeah, no, to, to get that shot, is a, it's a good one. It's, it's I'm, I'm happy. I like to see. And who knows, Bomber, maybe you'll lose it and you'll have that weight off your... I mean, I obviously... I do enjoy being a, ch- a champion. I don't. I never wanted the Road Warrior title. I, at some point, I would like to have it, of course. But I will say I'm never going to give it up for one second. You're going to have to fucking beat me to take the title from me. So yep. Otis, if he thinks he's beating me, he's. I, I'm not going to lay down for the title. I am taking the title. I'm going to beat Otis. I'm going to walk in a death before dishonor. I'm going to defend it against GMSG. I'm going to go on from there, and I'm going to be the champion. Yes, I may not want it. I'm going to be the UV champion again for the second time, and I will be the Road Warrior champion again uh, for the first. All right, hold on. Still. Uh, yes, yeah, still. And, yeah, bottom line, I'm not going to get beat for the title oh, anytime soon. I love the idea. Like, if I had the Ultra Violet title, that's so not me, but you're not. I'm not going to give it up. You got to beat me for it. Yeah, I, I don't want, like I, it. I, but, honestly, look, yeah, guys, guys. I, lo- I love that idea of like, I don't like this thing, but come and take it if you can. Guys, let's be so, honest. That's the title like that. That's made for me. Okay. Yeah. That title's made for me. That's the title I want. Road Warrior title is just like you know, just a happy accident. Okay. I'll, I'll take it. You know, but you literally got it because you showed up at every show. Yeah, it just happened to fall into the tournament. <laughs> it was never planned, but I'll take it. But the UV title is where it's at. So Peanut is my bitch. Coming up, Hell in a Cell, that's where it's going to be at. If you beat me, kudos, but it's a death match. And I don't lose death matches very often, my friend. So we'll see what happens. I have lo- Hey, nope. hey, don't be giving me that. Hmm. Don't be giving me that, huh? <laughs> don't be giving me that, huh? I was going to say the most interesting thing about Hell in a Cell, let's keep this in perspective, is that there was literally two unforeseen shows of Super Showdown, which is like the greatest rumble, a weird live event house show pay-per-view that they're going nuts about, but are they going to really make it a thing? And Evolution, a show that wasn't originally part of the calendar, that's a women's show, which is kind of the same thing, but women only. But they're going to count as WWE shows with all the normal stuff. So stuff that might happen to Hell in a Cell, it's going to be hard to predict considering that literally there's matches on Hell in a Cell that are also on the showdown or on Evolution. So it's like, what? will it happen yeah. here? Oh, it should. But no, maybe this is going to happen next week. Oh, it's hard to predict that. That makes this I, such a crazy time of year for these matches. So I will say the... The match that I'm most uncertain about is uh, one that's definitely going to be on the 
Evolution card, I think, if it's not already been announced. I haven't seen no. Which one? Be- Becky Charlotte. Oh, that's on the Super Showdown. Yeah. Mm. It'll probably but be. But it might ev- also be an it, Evolution. It there might will, literally be three yeah. matches. It will and be. And the title could. Yeah. She, so the title, like, I'm, we're not going to talk about the pay-per-view in detail, but that this is my thought on it. They could literally, when you think, oh, logically, it makes sense for Becky to win. Well, no, what if Becky loses and then wins the next one, but then loses the next one? It's like AJ and Shinsuke, where yeah. instead of having the one match, obviously the story goes here, they had five and did things you didn't expect. That's what we're going to get. So the, the for sure thought process mm-hmm. is gone now. So things are getting nuts with these predictions on this. That's that's my thing here. It's not just, oh, Hell in a Cell, and the next one's Survivor Series. No. There's two extra weird shows in between. Yep. So it's, that makes it interesting, too. I, I, I like that aspect of it. Or maybe yeah. Becky just beats the shit out of her and gets herself disqualified. Because she knows she has a title match in Australia. So I just want to throw uh, this out for those still hanging, uh, hanging with us here. Yes, yes. The remainder of 2018... We got Hell in a Cell coming up this weekend, then Death Before Dishonor. That's our number 40 show, number 40 in the JRPL history there. Then we got Super Showdown, Bound for Glory, Evolution, TakeOver War Games, Survivor Series, Final... That was important, people. Yeah, that's <laughs> important. Final Battle, and then TLC, Tables, Ladders, and Chairs. That's 10 shows left this year, 2018. I counted nine. What? I had it on my fingers. I was counting. I got the nine. One, two, three, four, five, <laughs> six, seven, eight. God damn it. Okay. Well, okay. Oh, no, we're, I, I swear we're missing one. Final battle. Eight, nine. No, I cannot find a battle. One, two, oh. three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, guys. That's nine shows left that's this year. Nine okay? shows, nine shows <laughs> left this year, okay? <laughs> If you're going to make a statement, because I can't wait for us to talk about, like, you know, the jobbies, and we're, I can't wait to do, like, a oh. whole show dedicated to the jobbies. Um, but you got nine shows left to make a statement. You got several things coming up, okay? And we got three house shows. The rest of them are going to be all main shows. Don't slip up. Do your research, kid. Do your homework. See what's going to happen. Try to predict the best you can. And um, I just want to say I'm excited. There's a lot of cool things that's going to happen. Guys, Survivor Series, we're going to end this year with a bang, okay, in November. December, you know, that's, you know, that's there too, but, you know, <laughs> uh, November where it's at. We're going to end this thing with a bang. So. And, then, and then just think, in January is the Rumble, and who knows who wins. Yeah, Redhead's asking, Impact then, Show? Yes, that is the uh, Bound, Bound for, for Glory. Glory yeah. yeah, And yeah. that's next month. Bound for Glory is next month. So Yeah. Like yeah. October 12th, Hell in a Cell think, is this Sunday. October yeah. 14th. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hell in a Cell is moved out of October. For, so that's why it's all weird right now. So. Yeah, we have, yeah, we had three shows in September, three shows in October, two in November, two in December. That's what we're looking at, basically. Um, we yeah. already counted all in that that already happened this month. So, yeah. Um, yeah, but yeah. So that's what we're looking at. I just wanted to show, I see glory by honor. I see what you're saying. Redhead. That is, a, we're not sure on that. We talked about that before the recording. We I, weren't sure if that was actually one or not. I did look it up. Um, that is going to be streamed, but I don't think it's going to be listed as an actual pay-per-view. It is going to be an event for Ring of Honor, uh, the glory by honor, but it is not officially listed as a pay-per-view um, so I if don't want it will be, but yeah, I don't think we're going to be covering glory by honor. So, um, everybody thinking about that. I don't think we will be covering that. So heads up on that. Okay. Just want to let everybody know I'm looking at, okay. I'm just tr- trying to catch up on the chat. Oh my God. This is live with wood Scott and bomber. Holy shit. Okay. I think someone's trolling. Oh, good. But uh, either way, Bill collects me. Thanks for job stopping by on the chat. And honestly, thanks everybody for hanging out for what? Uh, three hours almost. nearly? Yeah, almost. On this coming up? We did start a little after nine. A little after nine. It's your fault. It started a little. Uh, but yeah. But no, it's appreciated. Everybody's still hanging out. There are literally seven people um, still watching this. That is awesome. Thanks, guys. And all the comments and stuff. And it, it is all fun. We do like talking about this. Obviously. Um, I have uh, I have two questions that people want answered. If we wanted to end with that, yeah, sure, yeah, sure. hit them up, hit them up. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let me find them. Oh, 
They're right there. Oh, shit. One's red. Okay. I can already see in the fucking chat. Okay, here we go. Oh, they're both from Red Hat. Oh, Jesus. What the hell? Make, makes it easy. Let's go. All How right. much blood do you like? What's it taste like? Yeah, let's see. Blood? What do we got? What's Red Hat? What blood type us? are you? Yeah. Do you think the GRPL should have more than one Hell in a Cell match at Hell in a Cell? Um, and, well, I obviously have an obvious answer for that, but I'll let you guys answer that first. Yeah, me and Firebucket. Let's go. Oh, Jesus, God. <laughs> <laughs> let's open with the Hell in a Cell and close with Hell No. Um, honestly, uh, I don't think so. I mean, you could have easily put a few of these into Hell in a Cell, and I wouldn't think anything of it, but it would seem, like, su superfluous. Like, it wouldn't be necessary. Um, you could have made Cross and Cam that instead of a submission man. Uh, stuff like that. Or, or mm -hmm. something. Or even Victor Unimaz, that could have been one. Hell, the triple threat could be one, but I don't think it needs to be. I think Bomber's I, I agree with your booking strategy of how things kind of should be, where the Hell in a Cell match is a big, single, important match for the main event for these guys. They get the focus of that. So. Mm -hmm. what, do you, what do you think, Woody? What's your answer? Um, okay. So I'm, I'll rewind quite a bit at uh, WrestleMania when it was Woody versus Bomber, top lock title on the line, control of the company on the line. That match itself was... You know how long I've been making it was? Because I, I don't recall. It was, oh, uh, it, was, it was a while. It was very long time. Yeah. It was like day one. You guys had it, to tie yeah. in the first ever it, it, event. It, technically, I guess, yeah, you could say it was day one. We tied the first yeah. show. With that with that much of a build, I think that warrants a hell in a cell. A match that really doesn't have a lot of story. I think one that does have a really good story is definitely enough for the Hell in a Cell card. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I. That's why I. That, that's basically my my reasoning behind it, which is what I would say is making the, the whole story behind uh, Bionic Knee and Hiroshin Moses is. They're, they're, we already discussed it, so I'm not going to go into it, obviously, but their story is a very blood, it was, it's very blood driven feud where these guys absolutely hate each other. One guy's, one guy's the other's elder. He brought him up. He showed him what to do. Then they broke up. He thought he was making the right decision, but he wasn't. The other one turned on him and now they absolutely hate each other. The, in I could have put another match in a Hell in a Cell, but guys, that to me would degrade the main event as far as, oh, that's a Hell in a Cell match? Oh, well, so is Finn versus Ash? Okay, well, I mean, that's the same. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I, f I feel it's very yeah. obvious that that should be the only Hell in a Cell match on the show. So I thought mm -hmm. that was a very easy choice. I didn't even, I honestly didn't even think about putting another match in a Hell in a Cell. Honestly. That, to me... That is the match, the premier match, as far as storyline and everything goes. So, to me, that was the only Hell in a Cell match that should be on the show. So it means and that. Like much. I've thought, I've thought about like on like a house show doing kind of like a gimmicky Hell in a Cell match, but like it not being called like a Hell in a Cell match. It'd be called like I think I said it before. It'd be called like the Solution Sanatorium match, and mm -hmm. it still have like the Hell in a Cell rule. Yeah, but it wouldn't be a hell of a sell. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we did with the uh, the guitar match, which is it's actually a hardcore mm -hmm. match, but you add in that stipulation. Also, like you did with the what beer bottle on a pole match, kind of like the same kind of deal. Yeah, that's it. Follows hardcore match rules, but kayfabe wise, we you know spice it up. Yeah, yeah. I think that's fine, but like with you know actually being labeled hell in a cell, I think you did the right call here. That should only be the Hell in a Cell match. And it's like, it's the rubber match for crying out loud. Like, that just warrants Hell in a Cell. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And man, that, that theme song, though. Oh, boy, yeah. Oh, oh. yeah, the theme songs. We even talked about that. The um, I'm going to go on record saying the one that you got for All In is my favorite. <laughs> I oh, love that oh one. the Whatever All In takes. one. I don't even remember. Is what was it? Amazing. What was Whatever it? it takes. 
by uh, oh, uh, Hollywood, uh, Undead. Hollywood Undead. I don't. Yeah, I don't even like Hollywood good. Undead, but oh. I heard that song because I I searched YouTube forever, just like searching songs, and whenever that hit, and I just listened to the lyrics because I usually pick songs based off the lyrics, and I was like, dude, this like, is like this the is Toronto good stuff. song we had. Yeah, yeah, like was... the Toronto song. That was a good suggestion. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah, and like this one, when I was hearing it, I I was visualizing like all I was visualizing like Bionic like the, Knee and Hilo Shin Moses, however weird that sounds. But I was the like video packages though, right? Yeah, yeah. like I was picturing oh, like yeah, a video yeah, package. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and that's why um, I was like, this song is perfect, and it's called "Can't uh, like, Go to Hell" by Sin Shake Sin. So yeah, yeah, never even heard record, of that group or song no. ever. So um, I I mean in the Discord, if you have cool song ideas, throw them out there because I've given bomber. Yeah, yeah, I don't have one for. I do yeah. not have a theme song for Death Before Dishonor yet. So I might have something for you actually. If you got some ideas? <laughs> we'll see, we'll see. Yeah, if you got some ideas, yeah. throw them out. But uh, what's the what the other question you had? Yeah, what's the other bomber? question? Or, uh, Woody. It is. Uh, do you ever think JRPL should have a full card of gimmick matches, aka? Every match on the card, Oof. be a death match, Hell in the Cell, submission, etc. Oh, dear lord. You know what? Honestly, aside from the fact that Tom and GMSG is a singles match, the main card of Hell in a Cell are all something. Oh, sorry, Victory Green and Mozdap is simply this non-title. Everything else is a, is a stipulate. Death match, death match, submission match, tag title. Um, triple threat, Hell in a Cell, death match, best of five. I would say it's close. I so. would say close. I would say maybe the main card, maybe not all the matches, like all the undercard stuff, but maybe the main card, like the I top ten. That. Yeah, I would say I could probably be on board for that. Maybe like an extreme rules one year or something like that with all main card matches with the stipulation, but not mm. all of the. Like, look at the match. Like, if you're looking at the website, just look at how many matches are in that undercard. That would be. First it's of nuts. all, that's a monumental yeah, task to do the scores for all those. Oh, yeah. Uh, but um, I would be on board for doing that for a main card, possibly at some point. Going in knowing what it would be that. Yeah. 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 Like, I, I assume, like, Extreme Rules would be, like, the time to do that, I, th- I feel, probably. But, yeah. yeah. But. I 100% agree with you that I think. Extreme rules should be the only circumstance that ever happens, and it should only be main card. Yeah, yeah, not the undercard, but main card, and th- that yeah. actually just it makes it more prestigious too. If it's the people on the main card, that's more of like a you know like a badge of honor, like yeah, I I, I earned this, like that kind of deal. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yep. But yeah. So that was it, Redhead. Good, good questions there, Mister Redhead. Yeah, and Broken Nerds was obviously about himself with his little title match, but we explained that one already. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, guys, Hell in a Cell this weekend. Hope everybody's yes. hope everybody's ready. We've only as as of this recording one, two, three, four, five. There's only been six matches announced, so we'll see. I'm sure we'll have like fifteen before we get to the actual show. So Raw and SmackDown Monday, Tuesday. We'll see what comes out of that. Obviously, yeah. Um, and yeah. d- just for the record, people, when you're posting your picks, page should probably go up, what, like Wednesday, Thursday, maybe even Friday. Yeah, it'll go after, yeah, after, after SmackDown, up. yeah. Um, whatever goes up, uh, don't wait till an hour before to post your picks. Yeah, don't don't they, let the power go out on you. You say that, is it, but... Is it, is, it, is it too soon for that? I don't, I don't they know. They will. <laughs> they will. It's some a, some do. Okay. Some strategize till the end to make sure, because to be fair, you never know what developments will happen up through things announced on Twitter on Saturday and Sunday morning. Like, ah, it happens. I, I will so, s- like, I yeah. get that. I will say but, the UVC is guilty. We don't talk about the matches until the last minute. We are guilty of that. We like we I don't I don't know why but we like wait till the last minute to talk about our picks. I don't I don't know can, why it's just a thing. It can go both ways. We are completely different. Like we talk, we like we've we've even been talking about it today, and like we'll talk about it throughout the whole week. But we'll still put them in like the day of, usually maybe the day before. And then I can have my ideas and post them the day the picks go up. And then turns out that's not a tag title match. Oh, it is one. And then I lose, and I lose to Woody. <laughs> yeah. And you think happen. So yeah, there's dangers on both sides. But at least if you pick, you pick. <laughs> yep. Uh-huh. But, uh, yeah, guys, uh, thanks for sticking with us if you did the whole time. I appreciate that. Absolutely. Yeah, it's been fun. 
but it's also been long. So. It has been, yeah. We need to we need to we need to work on making these shorter. That's what we need to work on. A little bit. Yeah. But bit. either way, uh yeah. So what when will we be coming back next time, guys? When will we come back next time? After Hell in a Cell is it gonna be weekend, is so. it gonna be at well obviously after Hell in a Cell. Is it gonna be after Death for Dishonor or before Death for Dishonor? Anybody know? What when is Death Before Dishonor? The twenty eighth. The twenty eighth. Yeah. Uh, I could probably I could, I could see us doing after Hell in the Cell since that's like so. Death Before Dishonor is pretty far off. It's yeah. a long ways after, yeah. And we could do recap mm. stuff from there. Yeah. Um, and there wouldn't be any like here's the next event because we just did that. Yeah. Yeah, and then like yeah, the episode. The next episode, like, we'd have to do Hell in the Cell and then Death Before Dishonor, and that would just be as long as this episode. Then we'd have Super Showdown and Evolution, so yeah, we should probably just... All right, well, yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we, uh, we will discuss how to make these shorter, first of all. But anyway, get us out of here, Woody. Get us out of here. Okay. Well, it's been fun, everyone, but uh, I'm sure geez, these two fellas want to get out of here as much as I do. But uh, thanks for sticking with us, and we'll see you next time on What Do You Talk?